very time. Um, I can turn the floor over to Kyle Gorman, who will be leading the presentation. Thank you, Rhonda, and good evening, everyone. Um, thank you so much for having us tonight. Good to be back here in Community Board One. I'm Kyle Gorman from the city's DOT. I manage the Open Streets program here in New York City. And tonight I'm here to share a brief update about um, the very open street and the design proposal that we had presented previously here at CB1 earlier in 2022. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen screen to pull up the presentation. Um, so I'm um, jumping right into the presentation tonight, like I said, is an update uh, for you all about um, where things stand with the open street and the design proposal that we previously discussed. So to start, I'd like to briefly summarize our up, uh, efforts to date um, since we've invested quite a lot of time and resources and thinking into this particular open street. Um, so, you know, originally the very open street was designated um, as so when the pandemic started back in the early aughts of the COVID-19 pandemic back in spring 2020. Originally, the program was designed where local police precincts were going to be taking ownership and management of these open streets, but uh, because of um, various types of uh, things that were going on at the time and, and shifting of resources, um, a local community partner actually stepped in the North Brooklyn Open Streets Community Coalition to help with uh, everyday management of the open street and really invested a lot of their own personal time and energy to create public space that is open to all. Um, we have now transitioned the management of the uh, open street to a contractor uh, that we work with, the Horticultural Society of New York, um, who provides daily sweeping, cleaning, um, horticultural care, as well as uh, moving the barriers throughout the day. Um, and they are a contractor of DOT, um, but we still work in close coordination with the coalition. And we're actually going to be hearing from them um, at the end of the presentation um, that DOT is giving tonight. Um, the Open Streets program is now actually a permanent program in New York City per legislation that was passed in May 2021. And as a part of this legislation, DOT is now actually required to take a look at all of the successful open streets across the city and really see what's possible uh, for evolving these open streets um, to different types of infrastructure, such as shared streets, pedestrian plazas, uh, and different types of traffic calming and public realm enhancements. And that's really why we actually have been working closely with the community on um, said types of plans for the Barry Open Street. And as a part of this evolution, really we've invested, like I mentioned, a lot of our own time and the agency's time and, and talking to the community about how things have been going with open streets, as well as what's possible um, as we talk about the design evolution of these corridors. So we've been hosting a number of community feedback surveys, merchant surveys, visioning workshops, both virtually and in person, as well as having the unique pleasure of coming to um, uh, to uh, Community Board 1 here many times since December 2020. Um, we've also done a few recent uh, stakeholder meetings on site with different types of businesses and other institutions to discuss truck loading and, and other types of curb management um, needs. Um, we also, as is usual with the wider work that the Department of Transportation does, work in close coordination with all of our sister agencies, uh, most notably including the police department and the fire department and any other operational emergency service partner that we work with. Um, we continue to work with these entities and the wider city ecosystem to operationalize open streets um, as just a regular fixture of everyday city life. So now moving on to the design proposal. So we had recently back uh, in the summer presented a design proposal to, like I had mentioned, evolve the open street beyond the barrier, as we're saying, um, and implement different types of design solutions to make the street, uh, the street safer for all road users. We uh, really wanted to hone in on um, different uh, types of improvements along the corridor. Uh, but especially really first and foremost connecting some of the most public, uh, largest public spaces that we have in the neighborhood um, on the waterfront, as well as the heart of the Greenpoint and Williamsburg communities. So really using the Barry Open Street as a park to park connection, connecting Domino Park to McCarran Park with different types of design solutions and infrastructure that prioritizes bikes 
and pedestrians, but still allows for limited local vehicle access and, of course, emergency access at all times. So we were looking at things like codifying two-way uh, bike uh, riding along the entire corridor, adding different types of pedestrian infrastructure to make it safer to cross the streets, such as curb extensions and other types of things to just generally make uh, walking safer and, and more visible, especially for drivers. We wanted to really develop the Barry Open Street as a local access corridor, so we were proposing um, a slew of different types of traffic reversals to make certain sections of, of the Open Street southbound as opposed to northbound as it is now. Um, so a lot of the proposal items, you can take a look at some of the former presentations that um, we've gone into before, and I'll, I'll link those in the chat after I'm finished speaking. Um, but tonight, we just wanted to actually let everyone know that the entire uh, implementation of this particular uh, design proposal has now been pushed to 2023. There's a number of variables that really contributed to this, but most notably is the significant challenges that we have with our contractors and the supply chain. Um, I think it's, it's not news to anyone probably here tonight that um, the wider sort of economy and, and our entire society has been profoundly affected by the pandemic and, and just shifts in, in how people are working and, and where people are working and, and jobs and, and different types of things that are required uh, of the work that we need to do to actually implement these uh, different types of designs. So we are now officially saying that all of the items that we had previously discussed and had hoped would already be in the ground by uh, this point have now officially been pushed to 2023. Whereas we'd like to work over the winter, it is not possible because the cold weather actually prevents um, any of the equipment um, to work and for any of the markings to adhere correctly to the pavement. So um, it is now just official news that the project has been pushed to 2023. But um, now with the sort of bad news out of the way, we did want to sort of make a few uh, new announcements about what the design proposal is going to include in the future. Um, of course, and that's, you know, the goal while we're here tonight and why we've been doing a lot of the outreach is to, you know, refine the design proposal based on any community feedback that we hear as we continue conversations about this open street and the design proposal that's been previously presented. So we're happy to take any comments or feedback that folks have tonight after the presentation. We're actually now also going to be extending um, the scope of the project, which was originally this year only going to be from Metropolitan to North 12th Street. Uh, next year, it's actually going to encompass, uh, or the design scope at least, and, and proposal development is going to include from Broadway all the way to North 12th. And then we're also gonna additionally add the section between North 12th and North 15th Street to connect to some of the work uh, that we've uh, been doing in partnership with our partner, our local community partner at Bankers Anchor, which is um, right where uh, North 15th and Banker Street meet, meet um, a few blocks to the north of where the Berry Street ends. So we're looking forward to working in close coordination with all of the area-wide businesses in the IBZ and any other community stakeholder um, as a, in that particular section of, of the neighborhood uh, to make sure that that section also gets a little bit of love and has a new infrastructure that makes it safer, like I said, for all road users, pedestrians, cyclists, and including drivers as well. Um, we are looking forward and, and we'll have more information about this probably in the future, sometime in the new year, about developing a public space proposal for Bankers Anchor, which I was just discussing, um, which is a new open street in 2022 um, on North 15th Street between Nassau Ave and Banker Street. Um, one of the things that we had heard from our community partner, as well as through our conversations at some of the workshops and uh, other types of stakeholder engagement that we've been doing over the last year or two years is uh, taking a look at adding some mid-block traffic coming on strategic blocks um, throughout the entire uh, open street design proposal. I will be frank, it's probably something that we're not going to be able to do at every single block, but that's why we want to be strategic about uh, where we can add this mid-block traffic calming. Um, a really perfect example of what's possible is a project that we recently implemented on Sharon Street in East Williamsburg, right between um, Olive and Morgan Avenue, I want to say. I think I'm right on that. Um, to really add uh, different types of, of features that make it safer for people, not only at the gateways where we're able to add curb extensions, but also at the mid-blocks to ensure that people are adhering to the advisory five mile per hour speed limit that is uh, designated on Berry Street. 
Um, and with that added uh, a space that's going to be at the mid block, as well as some of the other spaces that we were planning um, for uh, the gateway and, and sort of the end of the blocks, this uh, just increases space for more amenities, such as bike corrals, planners, and other types of street furniture. So in terms of the next steps, we are looking forward to actually hosting one more in-person community workshop um, for any final feedback and ideas um, about the design proposal that's been uh, you know, put on the table so far, as well as some, uh, some of the tweaks that I, I, I just discussed in the previous slide. And we look forward to inviting all of the residents of Berry Street, as well as any businesses on the corridor or nearby, and the nearby IBZ as well, given that they're going to be included um, in the new design proposal. Of course, we look forward to having everyone from Community Board 1, our local um, NYPD precincts and any type of community based organization or perhaps workshop attendee will be invited. So we're lo really looking forward to uh, telling you the exact date and time of that, which will probably sometime be in the new year, likely early February um, in person, like I said, and um, hopefully at that time, it'll be safe to gather in person um, and we'll have hopefully an indoor space so um, we can be warm and, and have a really engaging conversation about the, the open street. Um, and then we'll use that feedback to finalize the design proposal and then sometime in the late winter, maybe early spring, come back to CB1 with the final design proposal and coordinate um, any implementation details from that point on. Um, you know, given the size and scale of this particular project, um, we are still going through the details about how exactly we are going to go about implementing this in 2023 and what is going to be possible in 2023. As you might imagine, our resources and contract capacity and personnel capacity is, uh, you know, at a limit and the size and scale of this open street and the, the project that we would like to complete definitely is, is quite sizable. So uh, we will come back to the community and our partners with a little bit more information about what that phase approach is going to include. Um, but we need to work out a little bit of details, finish up all the work that we're trying to finish for 2022 and then chart out a plan for the spring, summer, and fall of 2023, which is our uh, next implementation season. So we'll have more information about that um, at the final um, community board presentation in the late winter or early spring. Um, and as we implement this item, we you know, look forward to taking a, a deeper dive into exactly how these designs are working. A lot of what we are uh, proposing is, is pretty transformative and innovative. Uh, for the agency and, and new to the wider public space and transportation toolkit. So looking forward to just really getting boots on the ground and seeing how this is working and, and you know, continuing to engage with the community and, and having a robust dialogue about um, how they feel about some of these design changes, what's working, what could look to be improved, how we can make it even better overall. So more to come, lots of great news on the table. We really appreciate everyone's continued um, engagement with us about open streets and participation. We you know, really truly think that our streets are our most valuable public space and our most nimble public space. And when we work together collaboratively, we can really deliver um, streets that work for everyone. So thank you so much for your time. I, I really appreciate um, everyone listening to all of our updates. And I just quickly now want to hand it over to um, our partners from the coalition to go through um, some slides that they've prepared about um, the work that they've been doing in partnership with DOT. So I will continue to share my screen, but whoever from the coalition is speaking, please take it away. Thank you, Kyle. It's Katie Jenny Horowitz from the North Brooklyn Parks Alliance. Um, and Kyle, I appreciate you and and all everyone over at DOT for uh, the many hours that you've spent um, uh, speaking with this community, whether here on Zoom or out in the streets. So. Um, I, I do um, acknowledge the, the outreach that you all have done and the support and some of the activations uh, that we've been able to accomplish um, at the North Brooklyn uh, Open Streets Community Coalition. Um, and so I said, introduce myself from the North Brooklyn Parks Alliance, but we're one organization uh, that is a member of the uh, community coalition that has been out there. Um, advocating and volunteering to make these streets um, into the open streets and public plazas that Kyle was describing as the future of our neighborhood. Um, so I wanted to start with um, kind of the, the lesser little known open street um, that we piloted uh, this just the last few months in the fall on Greenpoint Avenue leading into Transmitter Park. Um, that is um, more uh, uh, of a plaza-like uh, calming area that we uh, staffed on weekends. 
um, since September. Uh, we kicked off the open street with a block party, um, uh, if you could go to the next slide, um, that was in celebration of the 10th anniversary of Transmitter Park. Um, so it was a way to bring out the community to create awareness. We hear a lot with open streets that maybe people don't always know the hours, for example, uh, the um, who's responsible for it. So we wanted to make sure any time that a new open street uh, was being opened that we started it with um, a, a large scale activation where everyone was out so that we could answer any questions and share information about the program. Um, so the next slide shows um, uh, just another perspective of the block party, um, which again kicked off Saturdays and Sundays in a pilot on Greenpoint Avenue leading into Transmitter Park, which was a little bit of an evolution of the West Street Open Street, if you remember that from the beginning days of Open Streets. Um, a similar project is uh, Banker's Anchor, uh, which Kyle mentioned uh, is between uh, North 15th and North 12th, kind of similar to Greenpoint Avenue. Um, it's really just a, a, a passive, beautiful gem of a space. Um, it's one of our most successful open streets in that uh, there's a lot of positive uh, comments um, every weekend that we're out there um, since May. Um, and again, uh, in May, we started with an, uh, a, a block party, uh, a sort of community brunch that opened the street up to the community and informed people about what was taking place there. Since then, uh, there have been um, more than two dozen events just in this little block. Um, I often say that open streets aren't impact, the impact of an open street isn't the length or the size or the acreage of the street, but it's really the impact that that potentially even small space can have. And Banker's Anchor is an ideal um, example of this um, because it's not only a place where people can convene and have community um, and share information or in some place, cases uh, share books, share records, share clothes, um, but it's also an opportunity to kind of address some of the climate issues in the neighborhood. It's often seen as the gateway to a green corridor leading to uh, Bushwick Inlet Park. So you see here just a couple of the events uh, serving thousands of people since May um, with partners along the block, whether Shalom New York or the Lot Radio, and you can go to the next slide. Um, and so, you know, this is all a network, like I said, and so Bankers Anchor, um, uh, is kind of the stepping point to Barry Open Street. Um, and the Community Coalition is very pleased uh, that Kyle, uh, with Kyle's announcement, that they are going to extend the Barry Open Street to Banker's Anchor, maybe even to Bedford Slip, which we'll get to the next community meeting, maybe. Um, but the Barry Open Street is the, the oldest um, open street in this program with more volunteers um, than any other open street in the neighborhood. It's also, correct me if I'm wrong, the uh, second largest corridor um, in the open streets program citywide. And so at North Brooklyn, we're super proud to, um, uh, to create one of these anchors, which is a little bit of a different space than Bankers Anchor and Cream Point Avenue and Bedford Slip, which I, which I had described, in that as it's more of a, of a corridor, right? And so um, it's really for movement as opposed to kind of staying there um, and drinking your coffee. It's really about getting from Williamsburg to Greenpoint in a safe way. That's why partnerships with places like PS84, uh, when you have parents getting their kids to and from school, that they describe it as a place, um, as, a, as a means to get there that is safe and welcoming um, and really ideal, idealized for people who are walking, people who are biking, and people who are uh, getting from A to B. Uh, and so, you know, that said, there are still moments for activations, um, whether it's outreach about the DOT plans and, and inviting people in to learn about the plans and get feedback. But it's also, as people say, a place where they learn about other activities in the neighborhood. And so it's often um, at tabling events uh, to share, like I said, to share information. So someone was talking about how they learned about the demonstration garden there, you know, how they learned about the free library there, how they learned about about, um, you know, uh, the little gallery or the um, campaigns in the neighborhood, like the fight against the Brooklyn pipeline. And so this is a, a place for community gathering. And one of the most memorable moments in recent history, in, in my mind, um, was the Little Amal walks, which took place on Barry 
open street. And I think the reason why this international sensation chose this corridor um, was because of the uh, connections uh, and the, the sense of community that has been created there over the last year and a half. And there was this particular moment when this, you know, 10 foot tall um, Syrian refugee puppet came down one side of, of Barry, and then you had um, the sim uh, uh, twice the size um, life size um, uh, a puppet from El Puente come to the other side and they connected. Um, and that was really emblematic of the entire um, purpose of, of the open street and the, the um, a growing coalition of businesses, of local residents, of community organizations that have come together to activate and manage the open street. And while, you know, with the investment that um, Kyle just put forth. Um, it's definitely a first step. Um, the first step was the barriers. The second step was DOT's partnership and bringing on the horticultural society as a, as a maintenance partner to be able to move the barriers, to be able to do street cleaning. Volunteers have been coming out to supplement that work to also do street cleaning um, and to also do local maintenance um, and, uh, you know, the future is is bright, um, beginning in spring 2023, and we're going to hold DOT to that, right? Um, all, all of the agency's problems are going to be fixed by then. The city is going to have no more hiring problems by the spring. Um, but in any case, uh, we really look forward to those improvements. Uh, shovel in the ground, even though you don't really need a shovel for a lot of these. Um, but uh, we're also looking forward to the extension to Bedford, um, and you'll be hearing from us about more permanent solutions um, in the coming. Uh, weeks and probably at the next meeting. So thank you for taking the time and uh, appreciate you giving me a few minutes. Thank you, Katie. Um, all right, that's all of our presentation tonight. Thank you so much. Um, Eric, I will turn it back to you. Thank you, Carl. Uh, Carl, any um, uh, results? Uh, for the direction changes that were impacting the uh, um, the roasters, um, the coffee shop or the coffee yeah. company, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, yeah. So we've been working closely to take a look at that design um, and and making sure that uh, it's you know all of the things that they addressed with the backing in and and making sure that their loading dock is accessible will be factored in and. Um, I think we've been doing a little bit of research on the no standing reg issue that they had flagged on the other side too, so we can um, share more details about that offline. Uh, fine. And um, is there any? Uh, I didn't notice. Uh, if I missed it, I'm sorry. Um, but were there any uh, other changes to the plan that you presented uh, back in what was that June or whatever? Um, so we will um, be making some significant changes to the plan. Overall, the same goals um, still exist and the same overall premise of the design exists, but um, we will be coming back with, um, you know, I will say it, it's definitely going to look different, but um, has all, a lot of the same similar features, um, but that won't be presented until 2023. And of course, the other most notable changes are that it, we talked about mid block traffic coming, extending between North 12th and North 15th. Um, and I think that's it for now. Thank you. Committee? William? Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, I just want to say to my friends at DLT, um, my friends at Cooper Park are so happy with all the safety measurements and the planters that were brought with the flowers. So, you know, two thumbs up, great job. My only concern is the timetable. Uh, we had a wonderful workshop this past week regarding the, uh, the space underneath the BQE. And the one, this, uh, one thing we all spoke about is the timetable. The sooner, the better. The sooner someone's life is not going to be maimed or killed. So please, I know with the budgetary restraints and the other constraints, but please, um, the community needs these safety measures yesterday. Thank you. Thank you. I can't see all hands. Um, so let's see. I can see. Let's do this. Hold on. Give me one second, people. Um, so I'm going to do this order for committee. I'm going to do Kevin Costa.
Oh, I, see I, hand. I don't he, see any other hands up. Is up. he Bro Bronwyn? Bronwyn? Yes, Bronwyn's hands up. Okay, so Kevin and then Bronwyn. Go ahead, Kevin. Awesome. Thank you. Um, thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Katie. Great presentations. Um, thank you for being here tonight and hearing our our input and for presenting to us. Um, I ha I wanted to start off with a question for you, Kyle. Um, can you dive into a little bit further um, what phase one is going to look like and clarify for us like where the boundaries of that are? So I, I can't say for certain what the boundaries or what specific items are going to be a part of phase one. Um, I'll just go back to the, the statement that I made about the size and the scale of this open street. It is, you know, looking at it now, if we did it and in, in what we want to do, it would actually eat close to 50% of our entire markings contract um, for the entire year. Um, and, you know, we are restricted by contract capacity, personnel issues. And, and so on and so forth. Um, so we don't have those specifics just yet. Um, I will also point to the a similar project that we just recently did on 34th Avenue in Jackson Heights, which is the, the first the largest open street in the entire city. We had hoped to implement that entire 26 block long SIF in 2022 for the, the items that we were planning to do this year. And unfortunately, some of those items are now being pushed to 2023. And implementation for that one started back in the spring. So um, it's it's just given the way that, you know, New York City is the most complex infrastructure environment in the world. Um, it, it is going to take us time um, just by the sheer fact that we're in New York City. And then when you layer in all the other variables, that's what's really going to slow down. But in the winter, we'll have more about um, what will be included in phase one and beyond. Great. And just a quick follow up um, in terms of like how we can keep it's happening dealing. out. In terms of um, how we can keep DOT accountable and really push for this and, and essentially figure out who we need to yell at, like, is it the mayor? Is it <laughs> the commissioner? Um, how can we like keep the pressure on? Because this is something that the community has said time and time again through thousands of petition signatures and, and community engagement meetings and false promises and pushing and pushing and pushing um that we want this and and it's been you know essentially a, a failure on on many many parts um of the dot you know it's it's kind of like we've been waiting for so long for this to happen and when is it going to actually happen um we hear you in terms of like the covid delays and supply chain issues but at some point you know something's got to give um so wondering how can we continue to apply the pressure um that's uh you know you can continue to i think voice those um specific points and and uh, venues just like this and of course you can feel free to reach out directly to uh, the commissioner himself via um an online uh, form um i will say that we are equally disappointed that um this didn't go on the ground this year this was going to be one of the flagship, if not the most marquee um, thing that we have done to date for um, New York City infrastructure and open streets. So um, I, I just want to reiterate that this isn't a decision that we made lightly and are, are equally disappointed. And I am I am fairly certain that we will have something in the ground in 2023. I just cannot say it's going to be every single block of the very open street, including the new sections that we're talking about. And, you know, there's also, as, as, as this community that advocated for a lot of desire to see this work on other blocks too. And we've got 5,999 other miles of streets that to also focus on and, and make sure that we're doing things in an equitable way. Um, so we'll have more details on, on the phased approach in the coming months. Great, um, would you mind sharing a link to um to us on how we can communicate with uh commissioner bray yeah. I, will in chat. I don't actually Thank know you. if i have the ability to put it in the chat because there's no chat oh no there is sorry um so um yeah i will add it to the chat or no these are captions is there a chat sorry yeah, there's no chat kyle no okay. um, no, sorry, sorry. no chat if you go on to the dot website 
and you hit the uh, menu item that says contact the DOT and then scroll down, you can contact the Brooklyn, you can report a problem to the uh, Brooklyn Borough Commissioner Keith Bray. Thank you, Rhonda. I, I'm just, I was so thrown off. I didn't realize that there were captions too. I was, I, I was just on my name and I was like, wait, I haven't been in the chat. I'm sorry. So yes, uh, do what Rhonda just said about the contact the DOT form. Next. Promise. I'm sorry, Hi, Kevin, Kyle. were you done? Oh. Kevin, were you, were you through? Kevin Costa? Uh, yes, for now. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Roman, go ahead. Uh, thanks, Eric. Uh, thanks to Kyle and to Katie for your presentation and for your support of the very open street, which um, I also support. Um, I know we've all talked about this at length, uh, over my short tenure over the last year and a half on the committee. And um, I know that it, you know, predates that by at, at least a year, if not more. Um, so I was wondering, um, Kyle, what the community feedback session or process is going to be in the winter. Like, not, I, I'm all for community feedback. I think, you know, this has been a very long process. I know I've been involved in multiple community feedback sessions on the very open street, um, in addition to attending the presentation last June. So I'm, I guess I'm sort of confused about like, is this a delay? Is this just like, we're here, we're telling you that it's delayed, which like, of course, it's super disappointing, but I get it. Um, and I echo, you know, Kevin's frustration and the frustration of many other community members, but, um, or and or is this like a, a redesign or like what is the purpose of a community feedback interim um, phase if the design sounds like it's you know been already put through the ringer many many times? Yeah, thank you for that question. So um, you know we will be presenting like I said a pretty significantly different design um, in the winter. Um, and we are eager to get um, all of the community's feedback on those changes. Like I said, it'll still have the same basic premise and design principles, but um, it will look different. Um, arguably, it might even be better. Um, and we are just eager to get the uh, community's feedback on some of those changes. We're also now changing the scope of the project to include between North 12th and North 15th Street. So there's a new geography that's being added. Um, as, as you know, I, I believe, and, and many of the other folks on um, the call tonight know that there's been a new open street designated uh, by PS84. Um, so there's some opportunities there generally to even think about making those streets around the school safer for all users. Um, so, um, and, and I'll just say that, you know, as, as, a, as a government agency, I will, I'll admit there's always room to do just more engagement and have a constant conversation about um, the public realm, so um, we're we're excited to have it. Um, we haven't had an in-person workshop in a long time, so I'm personally looking forward to having a, another workshop opportunity. Seeing all of these um, friendly faces in person will be a, a nice change of pace. Um, so it really doesn't have anything to do with anything negative that we heard from the community. Um, it's sort of just the continuation of the process and. You know, giving folks one more time before we kind of put pen to paper or pen to, to pavement, let's say, um, and, and really make these geometric changes. Yeah, I mean, I, again, like, big support of, of collaboration. I just, um, you know, I don't see the purpose of going through that if it's just for show, not that that's what it is, but if the intention is actually to like put paint to pavement in, I would hope spring of 2023, then, um, you know, DOT doesn't move all that super fast as we've seen in the design process or in the studies process or in any of the processes. So, um, you know, I, if I had a say in this, which I don't, um, you know, I would advocate that like DOT should be getting that design refined or in whatever way they can in the winter months so that they're ready to go day one of the spring painting season. Um, because I think this has already been like, you know, vi revisited and revisited so many times. Um, I have two other questions 
or maybe three. One is that 34th Avenue open street that you mentioned, does that also still look like it did on day one of the open streets? Because Barry, Barry hasn't changed other than some of the additional barricades. Is that right? Like, is this, I guess what I'm asking, is this typical for the open streets across the city of this scale? So I will say Barry and 34th Avenue are kind of in a, a league of their own. Um, they're, yeah. they're definitely the, the largest of the open streets. It is true that 34th Avenue open street has undergone some significant design changes um, since 2020, most notably just implemented this, this past year. As I mentioned, we had hoped to see a similar level of progress on Barry Street as well, um, but we were not able to do so. Okay. All the details, you know, that I already went to. Okay. Um, one other question about the scope of the expansion uh, at North 15th. I think it sounded like North 12th to North 15th is not, there's like a gap in the open street. That's correct. Um, in the current operational open street as we see it now, yes. But in the, in the expansion that you're proposing in the spring of 2023 beyond North 12th, um, you, then you said North 5th, you're going to add North 15th to something. So we are expanding the scope of the design proposal on Barry Street to go from now, it, it ended at North 12th before, it's now gonna go all the way up to North 15th where Bankers Anchor is. Oh, I see, okay. And we're separately um, the, coming up with the design proposal for Bankers Anchor as well. Okay, and then- so It'll is all it, connect. That's amazing. And is it in consideration to extend it just that little bit further to Lorimer? Um, I think anything is possible in the future. I will say <clears throat> if we continue to expand the scope, it's going to just add some more phases, but definitely I think um, we are, you know, uh, open to discussing yeah, uh, uh, expansion beyond that up to even um, that section of Bedford that, that Katie was describing. Yeah. I, okay. Seems, it seems like a pretty logical, you know, one or two extra blocks. Um, so, I look forward to attending the community feedback sessions and sharing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any other committee members? Hey, Eric, this is Kevin. Kevin I have a your follow up, up question. Yeah, um, yeah, will, will um, the section of North 15th be part of the open street as well? Um, you mean between North 12th, North 12th and North 15th on Barry? Yeah, like is that, that entire stretch will be, will be open street? In the existing configuration of the operational open street with just the metal barriers, no, but in the formal redesign of the corridor, yes. Great, great. Thank you. Yeah, um, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to have that, those connections between Barry Open Street, Bankers Anchor, Bedford Slip, the the three open spaces function, you know, that much better when they're connected as a unit. So to have that infrastructure in place will create safer conditions for everyone and connect those spaces and really create a true network of open space rather than these disjointed kind of um, plazas that like don't really serve their serve up to, up to their full potential because of how disjointed they are. So it's really important that the community have that network. So 12th to 15th and, you know, connecting, you know, all of those open spaces is very important. Thanks. Sorry, can I ask a clarifying question follow up to that? Um, so explain that North 12th to North 15th will be an open street, but it will not have barricades? So in the like existing operations of open streets now, it's just a metal French barrier or two usually that's yeah. at the block entrance. Um, we are, you know, the whole reason why we are redesigning these corridors is to think comprehensively about design solutions that allow us to not require the need of a metal barrier and design for the actual outcomes that the sort of tactical open street was trying to achieve. Um, so we're not going to be adding metal barriers in that section, but we want to, you know, use design to, to actually make it for, I think, what we're all kind of um, looking for here. Um, 
and and with that being said, you know, we are we recognize that there is the need for uh, a barrier type solution um, that controls local access, especially on streets that have full closures um, for outdoor dining, for schools, for programming, what have you. And in 2023, we are looking to pilot potentially some um, of that work. Um, so more details to come. So we are, you know, simultaneously also trying to think of, of real more formal infrastructure um, that, that closes the street. So that's another exciting evolution of the program. Too. Okay. Okay, thank you. I just want to um, take a minute to recognize that Evelyn Cruz from uh, Congresswoman Nitty of Alaska's office is on the call. Um, I don't know if Ms. Cruz, if you needed to, if you wanted to say anything on behalf of the Congresswoman. Or not. Okay. Hearing none, we will continue. Um, so, Joanna, uh, I don't see any other committee members with their hands raised uh, or asking to be recognized. So, we will move on uh, to, uh, I believe we have seven, uh, seven people that have signed up uh, to speak uh, on this item. Uh, we will call those in order. Uh, as they were received, and then we will move on to, uh, to other folks from the public that have not signed up. Uh, but go ahead and go ahead and leave your hands up, um, public folks, um, just so we can kind of knock you off one by one. Bronwyn, if uh, you're done, you can put your hand down. That, just so I'm not confusing community uh, I think with I uh, board that, members. Isn't it down, Eric? Or committee members. Isn't no, it's still up, but it's, you know, it's WebEx, so who knows what's going yeah. on. Eric, Eric, I think we also have a couple of other representatives from um, elected offices. I'm, I'm sorry, Kevin, say that again. You I think up. there's also a couple of representatives from elected officials' offices. I'm seeing Abe. Abe Lugo, Lugo, yes. Oh, I, you know, I looked for that. I saw them earlier and that I didn't see them on there anymore, so <laughs> thank you for... Thank you. Uh, so we're Abe Lugo uh, uh, from uh, Councilwoman uh, uh, Gutierrez's office. Hi there. Um, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Please go ahead. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, so I know that um, Jen may be joining in, in in a sec herself. So I don't want to speak on behalf of the council member. Um, but in this moment, I do know that. Um, expressed throughout the community, um, community advocates. I know we signed uh, and, and joined into a joint letter to you all. And I think the consensus is that um, I know a lot of folks really, really want this implemented um, and, you know, expeditiously, expeditiously. I know that this is something that has uh, a multitude of layers to it and facets, um, but I just wanted to Echo the sentiments of the community, um, echo it from our office, and um, hopefully that we can collaborate um, by any means uh, to ensure that um, whatever support you all may need um, that we could provide you all and and especially in the connection to communicating to the community what's been going on and, and any updates that we get as time progresses, please let us know um, we are happy to do so. But yes, just wanted to echo that and uh, if Jen joins, I'm sure she'll speak um more more on it on her own thank you so much thank you mr lugo and if uh the council member does come in please just uh kind of give us a nudge and uh we'll recognize her thank you amazing i'll let you know thank you okay okay so miss joanna if you would be so kind as to call those that have signed up uh, in advance to speak, please. Sure. Uh, and uh, just, just so this is not as crazy town as the last time we had a thousand people speaking. Um, so hopefully we can uh, not abuse. <laughs> 
the the whole process and uh, I can keep it to a minute and a half uh, for all speakers. Um, and if anybody wants to speak on behalf of the group, if you want to talk amongst yourselves and elect a representative to voice your position. I'm very happy to accommodate that. Um, but in the meantime, uh, we will put 90 seconds on the clock. Here at Camp Brusatus. Hold on one second, please. Okay. Uh, okay, Joanna, go ahead, please. Our speakers. And, and when you hear the, when you hear my alarm, that means stop talking. Thank you. The first speaker is Benjamin Lamp. Hi, that's me. Um, thank you, Community Board, for. Uh, putting this together and DOT for your presentation. That was great. I want to speak in favor of the open streets. I am a community board one resident, live on Manhattan Avenue and to bike to my office, I have to go over the Williamsburg bridge and the safest and most convenient way for me to get there for a large portion of my commute is using very open street. And I would love to see further improvements, especially contra flow bike lane. So I can bike more safely and easily to and from work. Um, you know, I think that right now it's a little haphazard the way that you have to bike on the street. And I think that the only way to actually solve this problem is to have real bike infrastructure there and have it you know, separated the way DOG has it planned. I think it looks really good. And to make sure that we have uh, our barriers and whatever else necessary to keep those bike lanes from just becoming parking spaces and loading zones like they do on West Street. And yeah, that's one of the reasons why I don't use that street is because the bike lanes are consist so consistently uh, used as parking spots. So yeah, I just want to reiterate, I think it would make it a lot safer uh, and a lot calmer to have bikes uh, with their own lane. So, thank you, that's it. Perfect, 15 seconds to spare, I love it. Um, okay, uh, next please. John Romos. Hello, everyone. Um, I don't think this project is fair to the residents that live on Berry Street. Over 2000 signatures were signed against this plan. Um, I, I frankly do not believe this is a successful project as as barricades were never moved when cars access Berry Street. Um, I'm very upset by the lies that saying that the streets were clean when clearly it's not when you go on Berry Street, there's trash and and it smells over there and. Before the pandemic, there was a bike lane on the street, which was perfectly fine. Berry Street was a safe street. So, frankly, I don't understand why the DOT wants to close this street. And I would like to see the barricades end. Thank you. The next speaker, Susanna. Sorry, thank you. Hold on one second. Uh, okay, thank you. Go ahead. The next speaker is Susana Agus. Susana. I don't see uh, I don't see her in the list. Uh the next speaker is Anna. Anna did not provide her last name. Hi, that's me. Anna, we need your we need your last name for the record, please. Siegert. Spell it. S E E G E R T. Thank you. Please go ahead with your comment. Thanks for allowing me to speak today. I really wanted to speak against this plan. I always I work on Berry Street and I live on Bedford and I don't see this as being a good plan. I see the struggles that some of the people have um you know accessing to their cars and a lot of them are uh, an older crowd and it's not fair and i see people crossing the mopeds and bikes don't stop on the stop signs even sometimes i feel uncomfortable walking there um i just hope that maybe um since there are bike lanes there maybe just try to leave it as it is but um I'm not in favor of it and I'm just I'm shocked to see now I just heard the one man say that um 
there was over 2,000 signatures against it. I'm hearing that from the first time and I'm in shock. So I think that, wow, I think that this needs to be revised and everyone's opinion be taken into place. Thank you for your time, uh, for allowing me to speak. I hope that everyone has a good night. Thank you very much. Uh, next. Next speaker is Dr. Ethan Climent. It's Dr. Cement. Thank you. Um, and I appreciate the DOT and everybody for uh, the work that you're doing uh, in hopes of improving our community. I must state my opposition to this as a resident of North uh, 10th Street and Berry. The uh, street is a, a just a complete failure. This open street program here on Barry, in terms of sanitation um, and access, bikers and delivery people are constantly going in the wrong direction on the street, making illegal turns going onto our uh, North 10th Street, which is a westbound street going east. I mean, it is it's encouraging bad biking behavior, and if we need that, we already have the bike lanes on Kent Avenue where people don't respect the the, the basic biking stop signs, and there are numerous accidents, including some of my patients. Um, and as somebody who lives in this neighborhood, I'm concerned about EMS being able to uh, access us in events of emergency, I and I am concerned. Problem. That's not in my house. Um, <laughs> and I'm super uh, concerned you about EMS being able to oh, access, you know, these. I'm, I'm worried about EMS being able to access uh, us at our residence here. And and furthermore, um, I have business owner friends on Barry who are missing deliveries because of the, the current existing infrastructure around the open streets. And we're extremely concerned about how the DOT is going to be able to handle that with the final plan here, because if you can't get deliveries, you can't you know have your merchandise there for sale. And finally, um, I was just going to say that, you know, a bisection of the neighborhood creates uh, different aspects to the neighborhood. And while that can sometimes be a good thing, it can also sometimes create more exclusive areas and less exclusive areas. And it doesn't feel like a very fair way of bisecting a neighborhood randomly to just connect two parks. I mean, we're fortunate here in North Williamsburg that we have lots of open space with McCarran and Domino. I don't think we need this as much as we need the parking space and really, infrastructure for vehicles to be able to go in a north to south direction. Thanks for letting me speak. Thank, thank you. Um, okay, next, please. The last speaker is John Agnello. Good evening. Thank you for the presentation. I would like to say that I'm absolutely 100% opposed to this so-called open street, which is actually a closed street. It's obvious that DOT decisions are being made with minimal attention to the health and welfare of the residents who live on the street. It's propaganda and disingenuous arguments are accepted at face value to justify actions opposed by and detrimental to the community. Open streets and road diets create severe hardships for people living in the area while benefiting a smaller group of people who may or may not live in the neighborhood. Street priority must always be resident and local business needs, not recreation wants. And I'm calling upon the Transportation Committee and Community Board 1 to assume the role of advocate for the people who actually live and work in the affected neighborhoods and to join with the thousands of people who have signed the petition against this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and oh, I see we have, uh, do you wanna have Susan? Twice, Coots, right. Twice, yeah, okay. But uh, just the last chance for Ms. Acutes. Okay, hearing none, she is a no show. All right. Um, sorry, one second. Uh, okay, so, I, okay. All right, so let's see. Um, as much as I would like William to call names to make it easier, I'm trying to think what the best. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Eric, quick seven. question. This is Kevin. Who's that? Was, yeah, were there no other names signed up to speak? 
I think that there were sure. I, I think that there were some folks that had signed up to speak that were not recognized. That's yeah. the list I got. And and I just wanted Joanna. to say that um that I think it's not just about recreation, it's about public safety. Okay, we're, you're it's not about recognized. Corridors. You're not recognized. You're not recognized, Thomas. Thank you. I'll recognize you later and you can speak. Thanks. Uh Joanna, do we have any other that is the list and sign up ends at two o'clock on the date of the meeting. Right. Okay. So okay. So that answers that question. Um all right, I think I have no choice but to ask William to step in here and do his usual fantastic duty. Um, and as you are called, uh, take your hand down before you start speaking. Um, I think that just makes it easier to keep track of folks that have spoken already. No, I, I, have, so, I have three names over here at the very beginning, and for the others that will do the best to call you up, I have Maureen, Maureen uh, Bowler. Then Thomas, and then uh, Lydia Kors Korshop. So please, um, Maureen. Oh, I don't think I'm listening. I am here. You can hear me. Hello? Yes, we, we can, can hear, hear you. you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm, I'm opposed to the open streets at Barry. I live on South Eight and uh, Bedford, and usually I would walk down Barry all of the time. Uh, but since the open streets, uh, it's too dangerous. The bicycles go any way they want. They go on the sidewalks. They go on the streets. There's the only time I ever see people walking on the streets or utilizing the space at all is around all the bars, which I don't live near any of the the major bars on um, uh, like like uh, South Third Street, but I know that lots of people are very upset about that, and so that those are two issues right there that have to be dealt with in in the design. The other thing is, you have to appreciate the fact that people need to use their cars for a variety of reasons, and they're with any of these open streets, your idea, I guess, is that everyone is supposed to just crowd into other streets. You have to come up with a reasonable design for people who have their cars and so that they can park their cars. Um, and let's see, if the, my last thing would have to be that it's, it's sort of interesting when I look at all of the pictures, you don't have anybody over the age of 30 at any of these gatherings. And there's a reason for that. Older people need to sit down. You don't have any benches. You know, okay. thank you. Know. Thank you, Ms. Pollard. Thank you, Ms. Pollard. Eric, could I just could I just add one clarifying point? Because I've I've heard some comments that I'd like to address just quickly. I'll be very quick. Sure. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I just want to be clear that in every design proposal that we have put together, Every single block of the open street, you would be able to drive and park on. We have not put any design proposal forward that will in any way limit people's ability to drive. Just putting that out there and very on, um, we would love more seating for all ages. Um, so great idea. Thank you, Carl. Uh, Thomas. Yes, thank you. Um, and, and, I, and, I, excuse me, Thomas, uh, Eric needs your last name for record. Thank you. Uh, Thomas Moore, with two O's. And I apologize for speaking up earlier. I just wasn't sure how okay. the line You're not how the first, was you working. Be the last. Um, Go ahead. I, I just wanted to say that um, in addition to the comment just now about uh, not eliminating parking, uh, from what I understand, the whole point of developing the open streets is to add better biking infrastructure so that it's there's clarity on where the bikes go, um, which would address that safety concern. Uh, if it's not already clear, I'm extremely pro the open streets. I walk very every day and there are always people utilizing the space. So I think the idea that people aren't, uh, I, that is just bunk. Um, I, I think it's very much enjoyed by pedestrians daily. Um, 
And we live in a neighborhood where people can take care of almost all their needs uh, within a few blocks of walking. And so we should be optimizing for that experience and not for the experience of, um, not well, not for the experience. We should be optimizing for pedestrian safety and our ability to get around the neighborhood on foot and by bicycle safely. Um, and I really think this is not just about recreational wants, um, but it is existential to what we want our neighborhood to be and what we want our city to look like. Cars are very dangerous. They kill many people every year, every day in this city. You cannot say the same thing for pedestrians. So it is about public safety. It's about creating, it's about creating essential safe corridors for pedestrians to get around our community. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Thomas. With ten seconds to spare. Lydia, please. Um, uh, L i d i a last name K o r c h o w. Going once, going twice. Next. Okay, give me a second. Um, Brent. And just a reminder, once you've spoken or just before you speak, please take your hand down. Thank you. Uh, my name is Brent Bavenzi. I live on Grand Street and I walk down Barry almost every day. Uh, so um, I see people walk down at all the time. And I decided to look at the NYPD uh, crash numbers. And crashes on Barry since the open street started are down 71%. And the general neighborhood, you know, even on Wythe and on Bedford are down 40% uh, on the street. And people recognize this. And that's why they choose to walk down Barry and choose to let their kids ride their bikes down Barry. It has knitted the community together. This extra foot traffic has been great for businesses. And many business holders tell me this when I come to visit them, when I go get coffee, when I go get a drink. Uh, when I, like when I get lunch and this 71% of reduction reduction in crashes has only happened with a few metal fences. Imagine how much better this could be with real improvements. So let's get these improvements in as soon as possible. And let's extend this quarter. So even more neighborhoods benefit. Uh, thank you. Great. Thank you, Brent. Next. Uh, Dan Estine. I apologize for mispronouncing it. E L uh, Elstein. Thank you so much. Lower my hand. Hey, uh, Dan Elstein. I live in this community board on Lormer and, uh, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm nervous. Um, I just want to say I'm very pro very open street. And I wanted to make it clear to, uh, the DOT reps who are here that if we're going to make these safety improvements to the street, it's imperative that we go all the way uh, to the warmer to come to connect the Bedford slip bankers anchor with Barry open street. Thank you. Are, are you at that near that intersection, Dan? I am. Yeah. I'm 2 blocks away. Uh, okay. 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 Thank you. Uh, Paul Benson. I am. Um, thank you. Uh, my name is Paul Benson. I'm a resident of community board 1. I am in support of these improvements to very open street. I've noticed that this plan specifically has incorporated lots of feedback from the community and I really appreciate that. Feedback we heard uh, when we were talking to PS 1, for example, uh, parents of PS 84. I'm sorry um, when we talked to them. Um, but a lot of people have talked about safety, so I'll talk about businesses. Um, the data recently has indicated that more pedestrian friendly streets like this proposal actually helps businesses. Open street corridors have outperformed nearby controlled areas on three key metrics, sales growth, growth in new businesses and keeping businesses opened. The owner of Oregano has said open streets save them. And we have a list of 25 different businesses on very open street or near it that are in support. We also have lots of community groups in support of this plan. And I urge um, the DOT to implement this as early as they can in 2023 and to consider the extension and perhaps even more substantial bike lanes in both directions for the entire length. 
Thank you. Okay, next Thank is you, Mr. Benson. Carrie Wicken. Hi, um, my name is Carrie Whitkin. I live in um, community board 1 and I'm very much in favor of the improvements to Barry open street. I'd love to see it extend to bankers anchor and to Bedford slip, which is Lorimer Avenue roughly. Um, I spent quite a bit of time recently in downtown Brooklyn near Hoyt Skimmerhorn where um, the DOT has implemented shared street designs that are incredibly effective and define where go, define where pedestrians go, include a lot of seating, um, have made the streets so much more clear and friendly in terms of how cars and other users share that space. So I'd love to see the end of the metal barricades on Barry. I think it is very confusing how the street is meant to be shared and that the DOT's intended design is really going to clarify that. So the sooner the better. Thank you. Thank you very much. Graham Burns. I take myself off mute. Hello everyone. Um, thank you so much for uh, bringing us here and listening uh, to all our topics uh, and concerns. And here I go. Okay. Uh, my name is Graham Burns. I am a community board resident. I live on uh, Angert Avenue near McCarran Park, near McCarran Pool. And I also work in the neighborhood as well. I have an office that is on North 15th Street. So every single day on my walk to work, I have to pass through Bankers Anchor, literally, and um, also walk down Berry Street. Um, so it is a part of my commute daily. Uh, I am in favor of the, the open street. I'm in favor of extending it all the way to Bedford Slip. Absolutely. Um, I, I am also concerned about the safety and I think the way to combat a lot of those concerns is to implement these changes as fast as possible. I think the, the way that we can use design to designate where the bikes are able to travel, where people can sit and having that design is a way to um, mitigate some of these concerns. Um, so I'm absolutely in favor of it, but I want to see these changes implemented as fast as possible to mitigate any, uh, you know, issues with bikes and, and so forth. So, um, anything else? That's it. Have a great night. Y'all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kathy Park price. Let me just put my hand down. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kathy Park Price. I'm, um, I work at Transportation Alternatives, which advocates for safer, better walking, biking, and public transit in New York City. But I'm here as a Brooklyn resident, a 48-year-old Brooklyn resident who enjoys our open streets. Um, and I am here to speak uh, strongly in favor of Barry Open Street. Um, I was there just this weekend when there was a free community event uh, full of families, people from all walks. Um, and I just, uh, when Shalom New York, what, uh, they hosted a community luncheon with free food and music, and it was so wonderful to see the church um, out there in the street. I enjoyed the lunch. You got to meet some folks, enjoyed the music. And I just thought how wonderful that a space that's uh, primarily that has historically been used to um, designed around um, private vehicles is used to do more and um, put to better and more beneficial use for the community. And the same goes for Barry Open Street. And as Kyle Gorman from the DOT said, open streets are now a permanent fixture or regular fixtures of daily life in New York City. And that is a really wonderful thing. So I just urge the DOT to push the timeline and and make things happen in spring 2023 as the community has urged the DOT to do and advocates. Thank you, Ms. Are... Price. Thank you. That's 90. That's 90. Thanks. Great. Next. Thanks. Uh, 
Elliot, Elliot, please, for your last name. I think you're talking to me. Uh, my name is Elliot Hoffman, and I am a resident in the CB1. I live in North Williamsburg between White and Barry, and I am speaking strongly in favor of the Barry Open Street. Um, I'm sorry, Elliot. Can you can you just give me that location again? Sorry. Yes, I am on North Seventh Street between Wife and Barry. Thank you. Sure. And you know, moving here and and living here, I was pretty nervous um, to be in the area because I know how busy and congested and even somewhat touristy and unsafe it can be. Um, but since uh, enjoying the open street, I've seen how it improves safety. It's definitely improved mental and physical health for myself as well as. My younger uh, peers and older peers, um, I have gone in personally and spoken with neighbors and business owners, um, and that we've seen that it's made it more easy to support local businesses. I personally see delivery drivers every day making de deliveries uh, um, very, very easily. And, um, you know, Department of Transportation, obviously, you guys are an expert and authority in transportation innovation. So you are well aware of the workaround solutions that can accommodate any concerns that other neighbors might have. We all know that Kings County is one of the second most densely populated counties in the entire US, according to US Census data. So all to say that I'm very excited to see the very open street become extended, improved and made permanent as early as possible in 2023. And thank you in advance to the coalition and DOT for making this reality. Thank, thank you. Uh, Wendy, and your last name? Are you talking to me? Yes, your okay. hands up. Yes. Hi, um, I bike through this area daily on my way to practice Tai Chi at um, the park on North 8th and um, the water. Um, I'm sorry, Wendy. Wendy, can we just get your last name, please? Wendy Carlock. Spell that, please. C A R L O C K. Thank you very much. Go ahead, please. Um, I'm not sure what park. community board area I'm in. I'm right near Gutierrez office and like East Williamsburg area. And um, yeah, I see that neighborhood. I've lived here for a while and I feel. I always choose that route. Um, if even um, among all the other streets down there, there is a bike highway on the water too. But um, this is so much safer, and there are children out there daily. It's a completely human vibe. Whereas before, when there were cars there, we were, why do we have to share the streets with killing machines <laughs> that have um, exhaust, you know, filling up? neighborhoods instead of children's laughter so um i think i can't imagine anyone in the neighborhood not wanting it i think your property um you know your the value of your property is going to go up because you're not going to have noise from cars or toxic fumes you're going to have a chilled out neighborhood in which where people want to spend money there it feels like a village is very unique we feel like europe finally we're catching up with the bike infrastructure that is happening all over there. And um, it's time for us to make this as long as it can possibly be. Um, and I personally choose, I bike all over Brooklyn and I always choose safe uh, streets like this. Um, I know where every single one of these is all over Brooklyn and I map my entire route that way. And I enjoy the humanity of it. And I appreciate the thought that has gone into the design. And I think anybody with a car can also be accommodated. So there's no reason to complain about that. Thank you. Thank you. Could you please bring down uh, your raised hand? Uh, the second Elliot we have here, Elliot Drabble. Thank you. So, uh, yep, I'm Elliot Drabble, CB1 resident and one of the thousand people who signed the petition in favor of the open street. Um, I love the open street. I volunteered with the open street since 2020. Uh, I love the events. Uh, makes me happy to see people pushing strollers, walking dogs, riding bikes on it safely. And uh, just like Wendy just said, I go out of my way to use Barry rather than other streets because it's so much more pleasant. Uh, I'm excited to see the expansion of the streets to Bankers Anchor and hopefully up to Lorimer. And as someone who has checked out the design changes on the open street, Jackson Heights, 34th Ave, I hope uh, those of us in Brooklyn will get a similar treatment in the spring of next year. And concerning that we already give every foot of road space away for either car movement or free unlimited car storage, 
Uh, the Open Streets program makes me hopeful for the future of the activation of public space in the city. Thank you. Thank you. Elliot, please take your hand down. Did I lose William? I, uh, got back. SW, please. Is. Your full name, SW? Hi, it's Susan Visman. W I S S M A N N. I'm sorry, one more time. W I S S M A N N. And that was Suzanne? Susan, S U S A N. Oh, okay. Easy peasy. Okay. Please go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> hey, um, thanks for letting me give my two cents. Uh, we are Community Board One. We live right at 7th and Barry for the last 12 years. And when COVID first happened and we were all stuck in our houses and they opened Barry Street, I mean, I think I cried with happiness because we had some place to walk and breathe and a little space between us. And it was great at the beginning. And then I felt like it became, and, and I am a car owner and I have no problem with the closed uh, streets against cars. I have no problem with that. There's an easy workaround. I see ambulance be able to get through no problem. Um, so I have no problem with cars being blocked on Barry Street. Let, let me make that clear. My issue is that I find it very dangerous and difficult to cross street. And I'm happily middle-aged but I can't imagine what it's like for people older than me because I am genuinely fearful when I cross my street. It's right at my street, 7th and Barry. So naturally I'm crossing that every day. I'm hearing a lot of people saying, oh, well, I use that to get to work on my bike, blah, blah, blah. But this is my corner. And when I cross Barry Street on 7th or 8th or 6th, I have actually felt the wind from e-bikes and bicycles right next to my face. I've almost been clipped. I can't even count the number of times. Um, we always taught our young son to look right, look left, look right before he crossed the street. My husband and I laughed because we looked both ways four times before we crossed the street. I felt safer when there were cars on the street because at least they stopped and I could give them the stink eye and make sure they saw me and I could cross safely. But now with these bikes flying by, Rarely does anybody stop at a stop sign, which I get. I like my bike. I'm not going to stop all the time. But for pedestrians, it's not that easy. I'm going to be straight up. It's just not. Thank you, Ms. So Ms. I don't usually. Sorry? Thank you. Thank you. That's your time. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay. Next, please. Um, Francoise Olivis. Hi, thanks so much. So my question is just uh, fiscal transparency. Um, how much has DOT and other orgs spent in 2020 and LY and Y to D um, on the open streets in North Brooklyn? And the plan for Barry Street, how much is that costing? Um, sorry, could you, you, you're asking how much money we've spent just overall on, on the Barry open street? Um, yes, for, from DOT and then also um, other orgs in the neighborhood. Like, what is, is there anything with the cumulative information for fiscal transparency for residents? Um, I do not have any specific um, figures to share um, on um, the, the funding that we've provided specific to the Barry Open Street. But, you know, we, we offer, of course, funding to our contractor who operates the open street daily and supports different types and we, and we support different types of events and programming and infrastructure to support those events and, and programming throughout the year. So I don't have a specific figure, unfortunately, to give you tonight. Would it be possible then for the DOT to come back and uh, like have an Excel document that could be shared with the community um, for the fiscal transparency for 2020, what was spent for LY and for Y to D, and then also for um, what will be spent in 2023? Um, you will have to submit a freedom of information request to get that information. So it, it's not going to be transparent to the community. We have to FOIL the request? 
Oh, a piece of vegetable. I didn't say anything about not being transparent. I'm just following the protocol um, that comes into play with those types of requests. Okay, um, so that should go. And also, maybe is it something that Keith could put together? There's a specific section on the DOT's website um, where you can submit um, freedom of information law requests, and it details exactly how to do that. It's a pretty simple form. Okay, um, and then my other question, I think, Eric, you and I have talked about this like years ago, but the idea of legislation for cyclist bicycles to have um, license plates so that when uh, things happen with pedestrians, when there's a hit and run with a cyclist hitting a pedestrian, um, that's easy to be accountable. You know, I think, you know, there are people who've ended up going to the hospital from Kent Avenue. Francois, that's that's your time. Uh, yes, we okay. have. That's a state um, DMV issue. So you need to start working with uh, statewide electeds to to make that happen, um, and uh, organizing, I guess, <laughs> those folks that that want to see. I I will say one thing about Ms. Wisman's comment uh, regarding um, taking the. Prerogative as chair, um, I, I've, I think I've said this before at at this committee meeting, um, and I'll I'll say it again because it bears repeating. Uh, I've noticed, and some may have noticed as well, that there are three types of bike users. Uh, one is uh, the TA folks who uh, just not to you know. We'll, we'll call you the TA folks because you know you're responsible bikers. You wear helmets. You do bicycle safety drills, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You hand out you hand out helmets and things like that. You obey the stop signs. Go the right direction on on the streets most of all. So that's that's type one. Type two, which has been proliferated since, um, uh, you know, I don't know. Let's say the last eight eight to ten years, but specific especially since the pandemic are uh, delivery drivers um, uh, using e-bikes and scooters, which are are supposed to have license plates. Um, and, uh, you know, that's a whole other animal, you know. There's so many complicated issues with, with those crews. There's, you know, the problems of Grubhub and the shop owners demanding really fast deliveries, which is encouraging them to break the law. Um, I'm not sure how that gets reined in, but I will, um, especially for those of you that are responsible bikers and have done the work in the past to keep other bikers responsible. Um, this is something that maybe down the road, we should, you know, try to figure out without penalizing, you know, a lot of folks that are new to the country, immigrants just trying to, like, survive, um, you know, and I'm very sensitive to the, to the many issues um, revolving around the, the delivery drivers. But um, we have, I think we have to be honest to say that when we see bad behavior, it is often um, from that uh, cohort. And then the last one is, and I won't say this is every one that is using them, but the city bike um, user who, you know, probably hasn't been on a, on a bike since, you know, middle school, and now they're on the roads, and I see a lot of issues with, uh, because I drive around the neighborhood all the time, I'm all over the city driving all the time, and uh, this is what I observe, so this is anecdotal, but um, I, I do notice that, you know, a lot of city bike folks without helmets going the wrong direction going in the red through the red lights you know as if they're 12 you know things like that so um so and i have noticed one very as well particularly around uh the whole foods um there's been a couple times where uh um folks have just come whispering by and you can't really hear them uh the wrong way and it is it is a problem so i just you know i just the reality is, is that, you know, this is not a panacea. Um, I, I will say that uh, we do need better design uh, to make this 
more clear for cyclists so that they don't uh, do this and for pedestrians as well, and obviously for motorists. But, um, I'll just leave it like that. Uh, but, um, and then, uh, yeah, and then just to, one th more thing for Francois. So, uh, you know, as you're, you know, you do, it is, Kyle is correct that you do have to file a FOIL for this information. And then for the orgs, um, if they are a, a 501c3 or 4, they are supposed to uh, publish annually uh, to the Secretary of State, you know, what they're spending their money on. So that would, you'd have to go to the Secretary of State for that information. Uh, okay, sorry to, Going that little aside, but why don't I turn it back to you for uh, for the group, please? Okay, next, thank you. Uh, next, Solomon Green. Thank you. Uh, my name is Solomon. I'm a resident of CB1. I live in Greenpoint. Um, so I ride my bike and I walk down very uh, very frequently. I bike down it to get to work, um, and I'm always struck by. The sheer diversity of people I see using it. I see kids riding bikes and playing in the streets. I see older folks strolling uh, and I see people just enjoying our neighborhood uh, and our streets. Um, I also see residents accessing their cars and I see deliveries being made to businesses and people spending money at businesses. I don't think barriers are a perfect solution uh, and I think we can all agree on that and that's why we need to get uh, permanent physical changes implemented as soon as possible uh, to make the space work for everyone better uh, and to make the space work for everyone uh, and to clarify some of those confusions that uh, Eric was alluding to. Um, I would ask that the extension is made to North 15th as soon as possible. Uh, it's essential to connect Greenpoint to the south side of Williamsburg um, and I would uh, yeah, support DOT uh, in their proposed changes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Cassie and your last name? Um, Casey Coons. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, Casey Coons. Hi, everyone. I'm a resident of Community Board One. I'm in I'm favor sorry, Casey. of Barry Just spell your last name for me, please. K U H N S. Thank you very much. Please go ahead. Um, I'm in favor of the Barry Open Streets. I'm excited to see um, clear two way bike lanes. The open street being extended up to the Bedford slip and a permanent banker's anchor. And I hope to see it as soon as possible in 2023. Um, thank you everyone for hosting tonight. Thank you. Uh, take down your hand, please. Uh, I'm going to, I apologize. Uh, I'm not going to pronounce this G U I L L A U M E. Yeah, it's a complicated name. Hello everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I live in uh, Greenpoint. Uh, I am in support of the Bury Open Street and in support of DOT's plans to improve the open street, increase its safety. I think the plans go in the right direction. I wish they went further. Uh, I agree with the statements made by, made by my neighbours in favour of the streets as well. Um, I want to thank my neighbour who said I'm under 30, but I also wish to thank uh, Carl of DOT for his efforts and, and patience. Um, I think you're making a uh, positive difference in the neighborhood and uh, making a positive difference to many lives. So thank you for that. Um, I wish the project went up to uh, Banker Street, especially uh, when I use the open street, it's often to end up on Banker Street and go home. Um, Carl, what you said about the delayed timelines is concerning to me. Um, can, can you Please tell us how we can best put, um, you, you said uh, to email the, the commissioner, which I will, but how are there other ways where we can register a support and say, this is important to us and this is important to the neighborhood. Um, finally, I hope that you can take with you that this is something that many people support. There's a few, there's a few opponents and this is reasonable uh, for them to talk, but many of us are in favor uh, and I wish to use the remainder of my time uh, for us to have a show of hands, all of us who are in support, just so you can see how overwhelming the support is. Thank you. Thank you. Um... Thank you. Just, just one thing, William, just, uh, just to be clear. So the, um, 
So 2023 is next year. And there is something called, for those of you that are not aware, there's something called a painting season. Um, and that has to do with um, temperatures that, you know, allow for, sorry, it's my alarm, temperatures that allow for like paint to go down or for construction work to happen and things like that. This is um, something that we've seen at Meeker. Uh, where the work has come to an end now because we're going into the cold months and things like that. So um, I understand some of you are disappointed that this work that we had seen in June did not come through um, this painting season, uh, which just ended. But um, it is a delay, but it, DOT uh, cannot, you know, work on some things over the winter. It's just not it just won't work um so uh, i i and just going way back to bronwyn's concern about having another uh public forum um i do believe i i see the need for it kyle um however i do think that by now you know we should be fairly shovel ready um for stuff to get started um you know like may <laughs> or <laughs> excuse me or something like that but um i understand that you need to because of the changes you need to do another um another public outreach but uh anyway so that just so that people aren't like why are we starting tomorrow it's because you can't uh the paint can't go down um some projects can't happen uh until it gets warm so i just kind of give DOT a little leeway there that the weather is the is part of the issue anyway so uh anyway so thank you may i respond please uh sorry who was that that's guillaume who just uh no commented. you can't it's because we have to um get to the next speaker we have many thank super you. speakers um barb hartel please unmute yourself Barb. Now? Yes, there you go. go. Okay, good. Okay, so um, I'm I'm here to support the Berry Street open street. Um, I live on South 2nd between Roebling and, and uh, Driggs, and I wish that Grand Street would have become an open street too, but maybe that's in the future. But anyways, B Barry is, and I wish that it would start, the open street would start at division, which would be really great, but I'm sure that's not going to happen. So it's good we can start it at, um, to, you know, extend it to um, the Bedford Slip and Bankers Anchor and all that. That would be great. And I really like that there's, I didn't really see the presentation, but I understand that you're going to put in an enhanced bike lane there, which will help with the kind of, um, Lucy goosey um, bike riding that's on there now with people on the right and the left and the middle. So that would really help keep the bikes like in one area. So thank you. And I hope this goes through and I can't wait to ride it again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chris Roberti. Hi everyone. Um, I've lived in CB1 uh, for about 15 years, um, 43. And feeling old. Um, I am in favor of Berry Street. It's like one of my favorite streets. I've ridden a bike since, you know, I, the whole time I've lived here. I think I'm on Berry Street at least twice a day, running and then walking my one year old son um, in a stroller. It's awesome. I, when guests come to the city, I take them there. I wish there were more streets like it. Um, and as a driver, uh, please take away more parking spaces. Um, the 1 thing I would agree on as a biker, it's nice to be able to have maybe the clear, like delineations for the 2 bike lanes. So we all know where we're going. Um, and I would like it to continue it all the way to Lorimer. I live in Greenpoint and I use it to travel to the Williamsburg bridge or to um, South Brooklyn. And I think that's a real dicey area. Um, and it's such a nice place. The Berry Street is so nice um, to extend it all the way. Um, and please start as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, again, I apologize. Jessamine Lee. Hi, that's me. Um, 
I am a longtime parent at PS84 and a longtime parent leader and a parent at 84 and using Berry Street for the last 10 years on a daily basis. And um, I want to thank uh, Kyle and the DOT for um, their support and collaboration with us on the Open Street. The 84 community overwhelmingly supports this Open Street project. Um, it's been a tremendous boon. It's a, become a vital community corridor for our students and our families. Um, and you know the possibilities for what Berry Street can become as a natural extension of our school are just limitless. That said, um, looking at the plan, looking at the proposed plan, we have a couple of notes. Uh, we hi Kyle. <laughs> um, we would really love to see the Berry Open Street hours start at 7 a.m. Um, because that's when our building opens and that's when our families start arriving at school. And we would also, it's really imperative. Uh, as our building becomes barrier free and ADA accessible and becomes a place where, um, you know, students are arriving by paratransit, that the bike lane be on the east side of Barry, not on the west side of Barry on that block, as it's going to interfere with, you know, the arrival and dismissal of our students who rely on mobility supports. Um, and to echo what other people say, I understand that there is a painting season, um, but 84 is anxiously awaiting the installation of the long sought, approved, promised traffic light at the intersection of uh, Barry and Grand. It was over a year ago that one of our parents was hit by a car there on, um, on their way to drop a, their child off at school and nothing has changed. And you know, the time to make our streets safe for our children, safe for everyone is now. Um, and there's no season on wiring. There's no season on jackhammering. This can be done today and we need it. I, you know, we don't need another Sammy Cohen situation. We don't need another Matt, Matthew Jensen situation. And this cannot wait. Um, it's really, it's kind of unacceptable at this point. So, you know, we're huge fans. We are so excited about what this can mean for our school and become for our school, become a learning place, a reading place, a performance space, a meeting space, you know, and it has been so essential during the construction of William Sheridan Playground for us. And we appreciate CB1 support with that. Um, but we need that traffic light. We need open streets to start earlier and we need the bike lane to not interfere with people entering and exiting our building. And, you know, um, thank you, Miss Lee. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, uh, David. Nice to see you. David Roberti. Roberti. Hi, everyone. I'm David Roberti. I live on Nassau Avenue. I've lived here for about 12 years. Um, big supporter of Berry Open Street, big supporter of all of the North Brooklyn Open Streets and the importance of connecting them, making them safer with better designs, better designed infrastructure, making them more intuitive uh, by connecting them. And I just want to emphasize that, um, you know, that these spaces are not just, you know, transportation corridors. There are spaces where people are building community. There are people are, are sites of, of public service, of cultural growth, uh, political activism. And, um, you know, I've seen people of all walks of life interacting and, um, and, getting, and connecting. Um, and I think it helps our neighborhood grow stronger uh, for the future. So I'm a big supporter of all these projects. Thank you. Thank you. And again, I apologize. Um, S O L V E I G and your last name. Thank you. Thank you. Solve and last name is spelled E N T. W I S is in Sam T L E. Um, my name is Solve. Hi, everyone. Thanks for taking the time tonight. I'm a resident of community board 1. I'm on South 3rd and Roebling. Um, I'm grateful to say that I get to utilize Barry every day, walking and biking it. Um, I'm very much in support of extending the Barry open street and getting these permanent improvements implemented in early 2023. Um, I will say that the speed limit sign for 5 miles per hour is posted. It's clear to me when I'm walking, but um, maybe for those not new or who are new to the street. So I think that better design is really, really vital. And then maybe more people can feel comfortable and love Barry as much as I do and the 2,500 other people who have signed in support. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Chris Wong. 
Hi, I'm here. Hi. Um, my name is Chris Wong. I live in Community Board 1. I live on um, North 7th Street and Havemeyer. I've lived in Williamsburg, the different apartments, for over a decade. I am strongly in support of the very open streets. I use it every day as a pedestrian. My wife walks to work. She uses it to walk to work. I walk and run down it. I, I love it. What I'm probably most excited about is um, the block direction reversals. That is something that I see often. I see cars ignoring like the barricades, ignoring the signs, and sometimes just like zooming through. Not that often, but like, you know, if I'm running down it, at least one or two uh, as I run down the street. So that's something I'm pretty excited about. I'm, you know, hoping that we, you know, can, you know, get the, you know, improvements to the street as soon as possible. All right, I'll stop early. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, thank you. Uh, again, my apologies. Emily, oh, I just lost Emily. Shine Gay. Hi, Emily Chingay. Um, hi, my name is Emily. I work at Open Plans, a nonprofit where we advocate for livable streets and safe and joyful public spaces. Um, I bike through the very open streets on a very regular basis, and I would love to see it be permanent. I would love to see these changes um, because I think it would make it a lot easier for folks who are biking and walking to be able to um, safely travel. And I also think that, you know, I don't have a car and I know many other residents also don't have cars. So we need to prioritize pedestrian safety as well as biker safety for folks who um would choose not to have a car. Um, and I would really like to see some more loading zones and seating for um, businesses. And I, yeah, I hope that the DOT continues to expand the open streets and start it as soon as possible, um, early spring of next year or sooner if possible. And um, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. Andrew, and your last name? I don't know if that's me. Uh, Andrew Clark? Y yes, thank you. Okay. Um... Okay, uh, I didn't know how to get called so soon, but um, so I've pretty much been in Greenpoint um, since 97. I went to school in St. Stanislaus, and for me, I'm against the the open streets for Barry, but at the same time, I would like to see um, maybe just like new versions of that, because I do want some kind of space where, you know, pedestrian safety, I, I mean, I drive, but I do believe that there should be better alternatives to driving in the city for people in case they have to drive, but also um, instead of penalizing drivers, I guess, for having vehicles. I'd like to see trans like more transit alternatives so that they won't be. Um, so that driving won't be like the main option for them, um, especially for people that are older or um, disabled and I guess. Uh, just uh, saying that I guess uh, <laughs> that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Um, Ryan, please. Hi. Um, oh, let me take my hand down. Thank you. Um, I can't take it down. Okay. Um, I am in support. Uh, I live on Barry and Metropolitan. I work over on North 8th and Kent. Um, I use it all the time. I'm a car owner. And um, I just really wanted to speak to the budget because it seems like the, uh, it is impressive that we've reduced we've reduced crashes and increased safety with just the barricades, but the barricades alone um, do not keep people safe. It's really we're we're keeping each other safe by making sure that we look out and there should be more built into the street, um, more delivery zones, more infrastructure. And I think the budget is important. And today, I went on Berry Street five six times. And the entire every single time I saw four NYPD policemen standing on the corner, and they didn't help get deliveries on. They didn't help anything move faster. They didn't help keep anyone safer. And I just want to remind us that the safest communities don't have the most cops. They have the most money spent on education, healthcare, and infrastructure. And we need to all raise our voices. There's most of us here are in favor. We need to raise our voices to our elected officials and tell them we want budget justice. We want money for education, health care, and green infrastructure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Nick, and your last name? Yeah, it's Hopman, H-O-P-M-A-N-N. -N. 
and I'm a CB1 resident and live on Barry near North 12th. And I don't want to waste everyone's time by talking about the safety issue, um, which I think is so easily refutable by empirical evidence, both um, a previous speaker um, presented evidence showing how much safer Barry Street is and the neighboring blocks are since the open streets program has gone into effect, as have numerous um, uh, studies done throughout the world, throughout the United States over the years. I'm not going to talk about the business impact either, because I think that's been fairly self-evident, um, both if you've spent any time walking down Barry Street, as I'm lucky to do every day, that that the stores and the restaurants are, are much more busy than they ever possibly could be. But I want to talk about the community and just say, as someone who has the uh, ability to look out onto Barry Street all day, every day, when you look out it's just so obvious that having the community, the neighborhood together in the streets, interacting with each other is so obviously better for all of us than having it filled with a bunch of cars, moving cars, parked cars, doesn't matter. If you have pedestrians, bicyclists, strollers, whatever, it's going to make for a better community in a better neighborhood. And as someone who lives, has lived in this neighborhood for 25 years, I'm super supportive and super interested in getting extended to North 15th because it's dangerous to have the Berry Street end at North 12th. And so that's all I gotta say. Have a good one, everyone. Thank you. Megan, the last name, please. Canale, C-A-N-A-L-E. Thank you. Thank you for letting us all speak today. I am a resident, I live in Brooklyn, and I'm a strong supporter for Berry Open Street. I was on Barry this past weekend and I really enjoyed seeing neighbors sitting, eating, walking, um, just being together in community, hearing stories about parents at PS84, how children feel safer, being able to have this part of the play street. I've also heard a few times the numbers of um, signatures and support. And I just wanted to be clear that Barry has over 2,700 signatures. I really like the work, um, Kyle, that you shared as a beginning, but I really want to urge you to start working earlier and complete as many phases as possible in 2023. We need to mitigate delays. Physical improvements have been promised on Barry since the spring of 2021, and the physical condition has been unchanged since March 2021. Um, I agree that we don't want another neighbor to die on these streets. We need to figure out a way to make them safer as soon as possible. And I want this street, the open street, to extend towards Lortmer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Nathan, and your last name? Hey, uh, yeah, last name is Pastor, P-A-S-T-O-R. Um, yeah, thanks for letting me speak. Uh, everyone has said things more eloquently than I will, but I'm a uh, you know, strong supporter of the open street. Um, I bike on it, I walk on it, I drive across it sometimes. Um, and I just want, there's a couple things I wanted to just highlight. Um, I, I totally understand the, the folks who have expressed sort of feeling like things are going every direction on, on, on Barry. And, um, you know, that's what, that's what these kind of permanent um, street changes that we are advocating for will help with. Um, right now, it's just a big, you know, it, it's, it's wide or, and, uh, and there's not clear marking. So if we can get, you know, permanent bike lanes in, um, street furniture, it'll be much more clear, uh, kind of where everyone can go. Um, and I believe it'll be a lot safer. Um, the last thing I wanted to say is that I, you know, I, I didn't start biking until the pandemic. Um, that's when there were no cars on the street for like two months. And that was the first time I ever felt comfortable biking in New York. Um, and there's so many people who still don't feel comfortable biking in New York or, you know, didn't get the chance to practice biking in New York when there were no cars around. And so just the more kind of, uh, streets that we can, that we can make feel safe to everybody, not just the folks who are avid bikers, but the folks who are on the fence about biking or a little scared, you know, I think that that's really going to help our city, um, move in a much more ecologically friendly way. So thanks again for letting me speak and, uh. Thank you. Um, Kaylee Abner. I hope everyone. Uh... All right. Sorry, I'm having trouble with the video. Um, 
you know, I can, oh, there it is. Uh, I just like to say that I fully support Barry Open Street. Um, I'm also very into the bi-directional bike lanes. I spent a week in Montreal a couple of months ago and really appreciated the bi-directional lanes just in terms of clarity for newbies and tourists, which we want on in Williamsburg. And also it really helped as a pedestrian. Uh, I noticed people go slower when it's bi-directional. Um, it's clearer to cross. Uh, it's, it would be amazing to have it on Barry as well. And I think that's all I need to say. So thank you BOT for your project and very happy to support it. Thank you. Um, Salem, Salem, I just lost you. I'm so sorry. Here you are. Uh, H-I-L-A-L, -L, last name? Yep, that's, that's right. Um, Thank you. Salem, hello. That's me. I'm a resident of CB1. I live at 80 Measure Old Street. Uh, you can find me right here so you all know where I live. Um, I'm strongly in support. I am extremely strongly in support of this. Uh, I have uh, in kind of just to be one of the safety people. I got hit by a car in 2017 on Driggs and Broadway. And I couldn't walk for two weeks and it sucked. It sucked a whole, a whole lot. Uh, it never really realized how terrible it is not to be able to get around. Um, and I've been kind of like wishing for a safer and easier way to be outside since. And that's kind of why I'm at meetings like this, because I kind of see so much potential when I see things like Barry Street. You know, I see so many like really wonderful things happen there every day, you know, it's puppet shows and, you know, like there's book drives, there's a, Halloween event, uh, there was like the, the library came and did like a micro library pop up. There's so much we could be doing and we should be dreaming so much bigger, especially considering this is like, this is New York City. This is Brooklyn. We are so good. We have so much to do. Um, I'm strongly in support. My, my one nit is that mid block crossings are one of the things that make the street safer and easier to cross and to help calm traffic. So that people who do have to cross can do so safely. And I'd love to second Barb's point. I used to live at Division in Barrie and uh, during the pandemic, in fact, and that's where I rollerbladed up to McCarran Park from. Uh, extending the open street all the way down to Division would also be fantastic. So thank you, Barb, for bringing that up. Um, thanks, everybody. That's all. Let's take the rest of my time to do something better with it. Uh, thank you. And I'm going to apologize. My allergies have my eyes watery. Is it Raquel or Rachel? The last name is D E S P E A U X, I hope. Yes, yeah, Rachel Despo. Um, hi there, everybody. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak. Uh, I am a resident of CB1, but I think more importantly, my perspective here comes as a business owner on Bedford Ave, right in that proposed Bedford slip. Um, and I hear a lot of people talking about, like, let's fast track uh, expand to Bedford slip. And while I think that in theory, it's a wonderful idea. I think that's a really sensitive area um, with quite a few factors that have not been explored in the shutdown of other streets and in creating other open streets. There's currently a bump out that is uh, a designated as pedestrian area, but occupied in mass by vendors uh, day in and day out. And so I think that in trying to speed through this expansion, um, we may create a void that is then filled by even more vendors and allow that, you know, it won't even be a pedestrian space, much as that currently does not exist as a pedestrian space. Um, and so I think that in theory, it probably is all great, but in practice, there has to be some sort of a consideration to the fact that that is a very tricky intersection right now with a lot of factors outside of just, um, you know, shutting down Barry. There's no bump outs on Barry where there were people congregating prior. Um, and so I just, caution against maybe trying to rush that just because we have the opportunity to expand, you know, and we have DOT's ear currently. Um, so that was, you know, thank you so much for letting me speak, but I think that's really my only thought on all of this. Thank you. Um, I had again, oh, what, there is it here. Um, I'm going to spell it and I apologize. Y-E-L-I-M, last name V-E-D-E-R-N-I-K-O-F-F. Hello, uh, it's Yuthim Vidernikov. I'm a resident of CB1. I live on Graham and Metropolitan. I'm fully pro Openberry Street and I'm fully pro the public plaza at Banker's Anchor. I walk to my gym at 14th and Berry twice a week. 
I have to cross Berry Street at 14th. There's no crosswalk every day or every every twi twice a week. I take my life into my own hands to cross the street. Uh, please extend the open street, very open street to warmer today. I'm tired of the delays. I'm tired of the excuses. Uh, every day that we don't do this, we're just playing with people's lives. Implement changes now. Cars kill people. I'll see you my time. Thank you. Uh, ben Hoff? Ben Hoff, H-U-F-F. -F. Uh, hello, this is Ben Hoff. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Um, so I, I should disclose I am a New York City employee. Uh, I work for the Department of City Planning, um, but I've been a 12-year resident of uh, Brooklyn Community Board 1 on Union Avenue by North 10th Street. I use uh, Barry Street frequently. Um, I've seen the evolution of it through COVID. I think it's been an absolute amazing addition to the neighborhood. It's really exciting to see young children learn how to ride bicycles and just all of the, the wonderful pedestrian activity there. It's, it's really hard to implement um, projects uh, that make something so safe like this in the city. And it was done quite quickly um, and cheaply by adding these barriers. So I'd really like to see the project uh, go further yeah, and, oh, and do more. And I think one me. way that would be really great is actually removing parking on Barry Street. Uh, I think that would daylight the corners and give more visibility and would give more space um, to the delivery people and the, the contra lane bike lane. Um, so, you know, I just, I'm very much in support yeah. of this project. I think we should remove the parking on Barry Street and really open it up and unlock the uh, the full width of Barry Street. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Um, thanks everyone for coming out and, and voicing their opinions tonight. Thank you. Um, I'm calling upon Vincent and your last name. Winston. Winston. Hi. Yes. Uh, last name is Valdmanis. V A L D M A N I S. Vincent. Uh, Vincent Valdman. Vincent. Vincent. If you're not speaking, please mute yourself. Thank you, Vincent. Go ahead. Wait, wait, wait he's not muted. Okay, Vincent, do me a favor. Spell that name for me again. The last name? Vincent, did we lose you? I think so. Where'd you go, Vincent? Come on back. We lost them. Woke up. Can you hear me? Hello. Assistance? Yes. Okay. Okay. Just, Vincent, just spell your last name for me again. Sure. Sorry. sorry about that, guys. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Webex. Okay. Uh, Valdmanis. V A L D M A N I S. Uh, Thank thanks you. For, thanks for bearing with me, and thanks for the the opportunity to say a word. Um, I live in CB in uh, the community board around the corner from the Greenpoint Library. Um, I, I'm a big supporter of Barry Open Street. I walk it every day uh, to get to work. Um, it feels a lot more relaxed than Bedford. You can see that there's a, a much wider range of street users, especially parents with kids. That's what you, something you don't see so much in Bedford, which is just really tight with those narrow sidewalks. Um, and I wanted to echo a point made by the previous speaker. I think Chris Wong was his name about um, direction reversals. I think that's a great, great uh, improvement. And I just wanted to highlight a point that hasn't been mentioned so far, which is that, you know, a lot of the uh, challenges that we have with truck traffic, with the BQE, it's only getting worse. Um, and what we have an opportunity with uh, very open streets is to kind of make the loading zones uh, work better and design the whole street really for a kind of a wider range of street uses. So really great to see. I'm um, thrilled to hear that it's going to go up to North 15th. Hopefully, I think it should reach Lorimer. The stretch between North 15th and Lorimer is actually uh, quite busy. The further you, the closer you get to Lorimer, uh, there's a lot of sidewalk dining sheds there in addition to schools and such um, that could really 
use a design to address the heavy pedestrian flow. Uh, you particularly in the afternoon and the evening hours and on weekends that stretch is really um, there's a lot of people in that in that area. And lastly, I just wanted to um, observe I, I don't have a car. So I noticed that there are often three types of drivers in the city. Um, in addition to the three type of cyclists, um, there's definitely the angry driver who drives usually a Jeep. Um, there's the multitasking driver who's on the phone paying no attention to the people that they're about to hit at the intersection. And, um, and there's also the driver who blares the horn the second the light turns green. And uh, so hopefully if we have a nice, Nice open street. We can kind of have a little bit of an area of the city that uh, works for people who uh, don't fall into those three categories. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Vincent. And and as a driver on the roads every day, amen to that. I see that all the time as well. So uh, next, Lars. Uh, Lars. Hey, William. Yeah. Just wanted to Who's recognize um, or mention that I think that there are some some representatives from elected officials offices. I think I saw Andrew was on the line. Just wanted to well, put that out there in case they were. Andrew wanted. Epstein? Mm -hmm. yeah, we just have two more, three more names and then we can uh, have the Alexis. So let me just wrap it up. Uh, Lars. Okay. Just, just wait one more thing. Uh, Yafim and Vincent, please take your hands down. Uh, and Okay, go ahead. Sorry, please go ahead. Uh, no. uh, Lars, yes. uh, my last name is Stefan, S-T-E-F-F-E-N. Uh, I live on Barry and South Second, um, and I'm always oh, also in favor of the open street. I'm also in favor of the extension. Uh, I also want to share that I'm a car owner. I don't have any issues finding parking on Barry or around the blocks. Um, I also don't think I need my car to go to Whole Foods because parking over there is just in general uh, terrible um, with like their uh, parking garage. So I feel I only need my car to go outside the city. Um, so I feel there's no need for me to drive here, which is also like good to have that open street uh, to go on walks with my dog, go on walks with my family. Uh, I'm really, really glad that I don't hear these loud car, uh, loud car noises anymore that honking for 24 seven. Um, coming from Europe, I'm very familiar with open streets. Uh, so I think this is just the beginning. Uh, we need do need to assure that there's uh, better safety and make the necessary procurements uh, that will help that in 2023. I saw signs, for example, on white for like motorcycles, not to use the bike lanes. I feel like we need to have more science about this also for uh, bicycles on Barry Street. And I also really in favor to make Barry Street uh, and, and Williamsburg in general more greener and uh, yeah, more livable for that. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. On this name, I don't know if he spoke or not. Uh, Edward Joseph, did you speak already? Hi there. No, Hello? I haven't. Um, I, if I'm up, uh, I'm ready to go. Please. Okay. Uh, I'm uh, also uh, all for the uh, Barry Open Street. I've been living here on Barry for the past seven years, and I lived for two years on Nassau and Greenpoint, so I know the area pretty well. Um, you know, I bike and walk uh, the Open Street uh, to work, to shop, to get to the subway, uh, to get to appointments uh, pretty much every day. And um, I do know that since the open street uh, came about, uh, which I volunteered for in the, in uh, 2020 and really uh, found it, uh, you know, a wonderful thing to do for my community. Um, I think that I've noticed right away that it's just much calmer in the Northern part of the open street where I live. Uh, Prior to the open street, there was a lot of crazy, aggressive driving, Uber drivers constantly circling, uh, picking up fares at the uh, hotels, uh, late night clubs, and all that seems to have uh, dropped to, you know, more tolerable uh, level. Um, I also uh, own a vehicle. Uh, I have a lot of similarities with Lars. Um, you know, I, I find no problem parking. I really don't think it, it made any difference 
and the way I get to work or when I come home from work. Uh, I don't know what some people are complaining about. Um, you know, there, there's plenty of parking here, uh, if you're lucky, of course. But uh, I, I don't think the open streets has taken away any parking or added any. Uh, things are just the same in that respect. But what is better is, uh, you know, the community is a better place. There's been a lot of events here uh, on the street, better sense of community. Uh, I know we could make things better. I know, uh, you know, nothing that is perfect yet, nor will it ever be, but it's a lot of hard work to make things better. And uh, I think we all should just be patient uh, as we wait for, you know, the DOT to implement the changes that they have uh, in store for us. I would ask, though, that maybe the community board, the DOT, and the NYPD consider, you know, a little more enforcement on the open streets. There are still aggressive drivers uh, driving vehicles, the uh, loading, uh, the double Thank parking. Thank you, Edward. That's you're over your time. Thank you. Okay. Though. Good night. Thanks a lot. Okay. We have we're down to the last two speakers. Uh, I apologize. A L A Y N A, Abel. Hi, Elena. Thank you. I'm Elena Abel. I'm a resident of CP1. I live at Graham and Skillman, and I wanted to speak out strongly in favor and in, in support of the Barry Open Street. I've been a pedestrian in Brooklyn for over four years now because I am still way too scared to ride a bike. Uh, the I'm always afraid of getting hit by cars. It seems to happen to me almost every day. I've been a huge fan of the Barry Open Street since it opened. It's been an incredible place to meet and spend time with neighbors and my community. I'm way more likely to visit businesses that I know I can easily and safely walk to. And I've felt so much more connected through my community, through all the events that we've had and that I know we will continue to have as the street develops. I'm excited for the proposed expansion um, and I'm excited for the construction to start as soon as possible. Um, thank you so much, DOT and CB1. Thank you, uh, Kevin Nachera. Hey, thanks, William, um, and thank you, everybody, and thank you to the DOT, um, you know, for coming out here tonight. Um, you know, this has been quite a meeting. Uh, we've been here for about two hours and 15 minutes at this point, and we've heard from neighbor after neighbor after neighbor um, for whom Barry Open Street is their community, right? You know, where they have been able to meet with their neighbors, where they've been able to travel safely, where they've been able to shop safely. Um, you know, so many of the people that you see on this call here tonight are people that have gotten to know each other um, and built a neighborhood and a community with each other and with their other neighbors over the course of this pandemic, over the course of these last couple of years. Um, and, you know, I Ed, Ed is right. You know, it's, it's not perfect. Nothing is perfect. Um, but these are also the people that are working to make it better. Um, every single day, this plan from the DOT, um, you know, builds off of, yes, their expertise, yes, their um, knowledge, uh, but also from community visioning, from conversations with the people that know this space best and intimately, block by block, business by business, house by house. Um, this is not a new fight for this community, you know, securing open space, creating positive open space, building street safety. You know, the parks along the waterfront from, you know, Barge Park, Manhattan Avenue Street, and all the way down to the Williamsburg Bridge, to Domino, um, you know, Bushwick Inlet Park, Transmitter. You know, these are spaces that the community said, hey, we want more quality open space in our neighborhood, space for people, space for kids, space for our pets, space to, you know, sit and have a coffee and sit by the water and enjoy it. And that's what Barry Open Street is, right? You know, we have a neighborhood where our parks are 121 acres of our open space. And our roads are 7,682 acres. 60 Thank you, Kevin. Times, 63 times of our open, 63, 63 times the amount of our space dedicated to cars. This is moving thank you, Kevin. one iota in the best direction. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, next. Okay, we have one last person who just um, logged in, and that's going to be uh, Sander. Would you have your last name, please? C A N D E R. Oh, yeah, that's me. My name is Xander Brzezinski, B-R-E-Z-I-N-S-K-Y. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, I guess. I'm sorry, that was too fast. Can you give me that last name again, please? B-R-E-Z-I-N-S-K-Y. 
I'm sorry. One more time. B R E Z I N S K Y. Thanks. You cut out on me for a second. Okay, go ahead. Please go ahead. Um, so I'm here uh alongside Rachel who spoke earlier about the Bedford slip, and I think she said everything I need to say about that. And I think that's something that needs to be taken into consideration. And I think the reason for our concern uh just really piggybacks off everything you guys have all been just saying to each other, which is you're setting a really dangerous precedent by just um, engaging in this sort of like uh, community sort of like um, conversation about nothing where streets all have sidewalks. So I don't know what everyone's talking about, that it's dangerous. All of them have sidewalks. You walk in the sidewalk. They already had a bike lane. There's a bike lane on Kent. It just seems like everyone is just really excited to have their street feel like Europe. And we live in New York City. There's loud cars. Every single business needs to get a delivery daily, if not more than daily, you know, like their local businesses. And it seems like by just simply saying that we need to shut down streets gives other areas in the, in the community, such as this stupid Bedford slip idea that you can just shut down a street for fun. And it's like, yay, now we can just stand in the street, just stand on the sidewalk. Like it's ridiculous what you guys are saying that you feel danger, like in danger by being on the sidewalk. I don't understand. Like, the only person I've heard of that got hit on the sidewalk was by a cop. Like, what's going on with you guys? Like, like it doesn't make any sense. Like, you guys are just, like, over here all agreeing with each other. There's, like, 30 people that have spoken about nothing. Like, what is going on? Like, let the street close or not, it's irrelevant to most people. You know, 2,000 people didn't like it. 1,000 people did. You know, as far as politics go, it sounds like that, you know, everyone's in favor of, you know, having it not stay close. So I just think that this is a really, really like just a waste of time, a waste of time and community resources that could be put towards things that actually make a difference, you know? Thank, so. thank you, Xander. Yep, thank thank you. you. Noted. Uh, okay. Uh, so I know we had Lydia way, way back, I think on the sign up maybe, and she didn't answer, but I, I did see her hand up somewhere. And again, if you spoke, please take your hand down. No, I didn't speak because I was muted for some reason. All right. Now, uh, regarding. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. Hang on. You're going to so, shut okay. me off down. Yeah. Regarding no, the. I'm going to give you. I'm, listen, Rega I'm going to give you 90 seconds. Please start okay, now. Okay, fine. I heard. Regarding the open streets, first of all, you, you're proposing all these design changes. Where are the environmental impact statements, the feasibility studies? Where are they? And also, going back to Jackson Heights. If you look at the YouTube video on 34th Avenue, the, the fire truck could not get through because of the concrete blocks, the street infrastructure. Have you guys ever thought about that? There's too much impediments in the way. You're, you're kind of saying, you know, we're forfeiting safety over uh, a pleasure. And when, when I walk down Berry, it's good that you, know, you have a lot of open spaces here, Domino, Marsha P. Johnson Park, you have another thing that opened up on North, Le North 11th. And why can't people just jog in McCarran Park? You really have to look at the environmental impacts. I, I don't see any. Can you tell me where they are? That's a question. Have there been environmental impact studies regarding the redesign of these streets? So, uh... A part of the work that DOT is able to do, um, operational work that we do, um, it doesn't actually require an EIS. Um, we do, obviously, all of the community outreach and engagement that we've done pretty much ad nauseum, as, as some folks have alluded to earlier in the conversation. Um, and any of the traffic uh, directional changes, you know, what we did was take traffic down from the sophisticated traffic model to ensure that traffic network still flows as it does. Um, yeah. That's our due diligence. So I'll tell you that. Uh, Kyle Gorman, do you have any environmental impact studies regarding all these proposals? Where are they, please? So I'll, I'll say it again. Um, you know, given the nature of how our agency operates and given the nature by which we will implement this particular project, it does not require an EIS. 
it doesn't require it. That's pretty bad because, you know, emergencies do occur. Mm. Yeah, and I'll and I'll also just add that everything that we do is done in close coordination with all of our partners at the fire department and the police department. And excuse me, Mr. Gorman, if you talk to the fire department when they have to plow down these barricades, you know what happens to their air hoses underneath? They rupture, they break, they damage. So how does that impede? Does that impede uh, emergency responses for fires? How, how are we doing for time here? Yeah, okay, so Mr. Like seconds. Excuse me, you have to look at everything, please. Ms. Korchow, you're, you're done. And just for the record, you're, thank you for your statement. Um, I just want to remind folks that are close watchers of this committee that I, I cannot offhand remember the date, but I want to say it was last fall we had um, EMS and the fire department to come in and respond to these issues with uh, response times and under the plan as it currently exists uh, there is no noticeable reduction in response times that is directly from the FDNY and the NYPD so I, I just want to Dispel that one more time. Now, the situation on 34th in, in Queens, um, clearly that was a fire truck having a problem getting through. However, um, I don't know that that would be the situation here. And uh, I believe that Kyle and his team are very sensitive to the fact that I am personally concerned about response times as well. Um, which is why I brought in uh, EMS, FDNY, and NYPD to to address these concerns. And so far, in North Brooklyn, there are no issues, and I and I fully expect that Kyle and his team will respect that and move forward in that direction. Um, okay, so just the last oh, Miss Nutter, hello from Councilman Ressler's office. We we can go to electeds if there is no other. We have two hands raised, but uh, it's up to you. Um, okay, so we are now at what time is it now? It is 10 to 9. Um, we will hear these last two um, uh, members of the public. Then I will recognize Ms. Nutter if she wishes to speak, and Andrew if he wishes to speak. And then we will uh, move on to uh, to old business. Okay, the person dropped their hand. Um, we do have a committee member that wants to speak. Um, uh, okay, let's, uh, Kevin, go ahead. Kevin Costa? Thank you. Yes. Um, I was just going to say that through, through listening to everyone who's spoken today, um, I think that the plan that DOT has presented would address many of the issues with, with the cyclists by implementing a bike lane and making it clearer where people like belong as a biker, where the designated spot should be where they should ride their bicycle, as opposed to the current design, which kind of leaves for some ambiguity. And I think that many of the dissenters would actually have their their desires addressed by the DOT plan. So um, I wanted to first say that, and then also just reiterate that Nothing has actually physically changed on Barry Street since day one of its implementation. So it's really imperative that DOT get something done and actually, you know, put, you know, their money where their mouth is and get get this actually done because um, nothing has been done. Not a single SIP like aspect of of um, the plan has been implemented so far. So. It's really um, it's interesting to hear that this is a marquee element of like the open streets, um, I guess, infrastructure, but yet nothing has actually been implemented to show that. Um, and then I will um, leave off by um, yielding my time to the elected officials. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank well, you. we have public. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, but we have two more public. Uh, peoples that want to speak. Um, so, William? I, Dave, I don't see any new names. No? Okay. 
word. Okay. Uh, I see this... someone, Jeremy H. Jeremy H. Thought, H. Yes. He's, didn't he speak already? I didn't. No. Hi. Okay, okay. Sorry. Jeremy, what what's the H stand for? Hinsdale. H i n s d a l e. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Ninety seconds. Uh, I'm along. Yes, I'll be brief. Uh, I, I'm a long time uh, CB1 resident. I live near Margolrick Park and I'm fully in favor of the Barry Open Streets and extending it and Bankers Anchor, um, creating that plaza there. I just, I really think these are our transformative spaces. And, and we've seen that, you know, there's countless times I won't, uh, you know, recount what others have said, um, but they really are just really the best of what the neighborhood could, the neighborhood could be. And, um, and I think they're really a vision for the future. You know, I think that people who get it, the people who live here, this is where New York City should be heading. This is where our communities should be heading. And uh, this is a real opportunity for the EOT to, to take the initiative to get this started and to, and to prove that New York City is a leader in creating these public forward spaces, these, these spaces for communities that prioritize the people who live here uh, above private vehicles, you know, and I'll just close by saying, I think a lot of people know, 1.6% uh, of streets are open streets. 1.6% is not a lot. So we're not really talking a lot of, uh, about a lot of real estate here. Some, uh, it, uh, according to the statistics, only 25 to 40% of people own cars in this neighborhood. So the vast majority of us, we really want these streets for some portion of these streets for enjoyment and i think this is a real opportunity let's get it done appreciate your work thank you okay thank you um ms nutter did you want to chime in on behalf of councilman member wrestler sure i apologize for joining late i'm sorry but i'm so happy that we're still having these conversations um as, as I think all of you are aware that council member Lincoln has been a, a proud supporter of the Barry open street and having this be a safe and successful corridor, the second largest in the city and have it be a shining um, example of what is possible for mixed use transportation in the city. And I, I look forward to, and I appreciate all the work that DOT has done, all the work that the community has done to make sure that this is going to be successful and continued input on making this successful. And, you know, we, we've we been working really hard. We were expecting some, some implementations to start earlier than now. And then we, rec we recognize that there have been some supply chain issues um, that have prevented this from being um, implemented earlier. And we definitely recognize and support that DOT is acknowledging and supportive of this moving forward. And, and we hope that it will be a very successful corridor in the future. And we look forward to any conversations moving forward to, to help make that successful. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Okay, I believe that concludes this item. Um, I'll, if there are, I'll give it one more time for the committee. Any last committee statements? I, I can make a Eric, quick statement here if you mind. I'm sorry, who was that? Andrew. Oh, Andrew, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's okay. Andrew, how could I forget um, you? How could I do it? <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Andrew, go ahead. It's not like you've been on this meeting for many hours already. Um, I know, I know. Uh, I'll just be very brief. Is that okay? Can I can I just say a couple of quick yes, things on behalf of the assembly? Yeah, go, go. Um, yeah. I just want to first of all echo everything Vanessa said. First of all, and also just thank um, the yeoman's work of this committee of of Chairman Brazitis and all the folks on this committee and all the public who have been engaged in not just um, a robust conversation tonight, but many about this open street, other transportation issues over the past couple of years. It's been oh, there's been a lot of change and there's been a lot of discussion over the past few years. Um, I just want to briefly share, you know, from our perspective, you know, personally, I walk the very open street almost every day when I'm getting lunch. Um, it, it's a joy, honestly. It's a it's a respite from the noise and the pollution and the chaos of so much of our of our usually very congested city. We've been uh, along with the assembly member to a, a handful of really beautiful, joyous community events in that space, from children's events to dog themed events to 
arts and culture and music, and it's just been a really beautiful space. That doesn't mean there haven't been real issues. Any program that is new and is stood up in the middle of a pandemic and then continued over the course of a mayoral administration is going to be tough. Um, there have been uh, some real issues. It's, it's not easy to rely first on volunteers and then on a CBO to move barricades and bring them back um, to deal with the very real issue of deliveries. And I think that's why we're so excited and we're so eager for the full design um, uh, project that DOT has shared with this community, which will, we really believe, not only preserve this really precious open space and create space for all users of the road, but will really mitigate a lot of the issues that come with, you know, basically using only barricades to do this. So, you know, to the degree that which we have kind of frustrations and, you know, I know how hard DOT works. They're dealing right now with all the supply chain issues that Vanessa alluded to, you know, new mayoral administration, plenty of challenges. Um, I know how hard they're working. We wish they, frankly, um, could move more, more fast here and, and, you know, could implement this program that we have I've seen has really tremendous support in the community and that will uh, alleviate some of the issues that have arised around the very open street. So, um, you know, we have made that frustration and that determination clear to the Department of Transportation. I believe that they have heard us. Um, spring 2023 is really frustrating, but uh, we're going to hold them to that and not a day later. So, um, Thank you all again for all your participation and and um, and thanks to this this committee and DOT. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot for that, Andrew. Um, and thanks for the work that uh, the Assemblywoman's been doing on this. And you, for that matter. Um, okay, I think now we can say the item is closed. Thank you all for your respectful and usually brief comments. Um, uh, this was uh, uh, a good hearing of what's going on. We'll see you in the spring when we have, um, and hopefully, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> My God, sorry. Uh, hopefully in the spring, uh, we will have a, a final uh, Perry Street um, ag agenda item. Uh, and we can uh, look forward to seeing uh, some of this work go in uh, in the early spring. Right now, thank you all again, and we will go to old business. Committee, anybody? Committee, old business. Committee, committee, committee. Can I, can I mention one piece of old business? This is Paul. Go ahead, Paul. You're going to ask me about letters and studies. I am going to ask right. you about letters and studies. The um, the motion that we passed about Metropolitan Avenue was almost two years ago. Um, so I guess kind of just a question: um, Is there any follow up um, action that we can take? Can we pass a new motion? You know, re upping it. Like, what is the kind of like path forward? Um, Rhonda, are you still on the call? Rhonda Messer. Oh, she jumped off, I think. So that was quite a while ago. And um, I think some of that um, got side, de well, some of it definitely got sidetracked by COVID. And, um, and then some of it got broken up with other studies. I don't have a definitive answer for you, Paul, yet. Um, I know. Joanna was looking at it and asking me about it as well. I have to go back through my notes to find it, but actually that answer is not in my notes because it was a conversation I had with Rhonda. Um, and I believe that this came up in a subsequent meeting uh, as well. It was, I want to say it was the beginning of 2019, Paul, that we had, that we, that we did that or could have even been that of 18, the fall of 18. Um, but it was, it actually was right around the time um, that that, uh, that worker was killed at Graham and Metropolitan. So um, I think that was kind of the genesis of that. That's right. Um, that resolution. So um, give me a little bit more time with it. 
uh, and we'll try to see. I, I think some of it is not happening uh, because of the everything else that's going on since then in the neighborhood. Um, but I think some of it was like lumped into another study. So let me let me try to drill down on that. I'll, I'll I know I've been kind of dragging my feet, but I'll I'll try to get a better answer for you. Okay. Yep. Appreciate that. Um, Eric William, can I speak? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I knew this meeting was going to have a lot of uh, participation because of Open Street, Berry Street. So, um, but I have a lot of neighbors on Jackson Street are very concerned that we don't have safety measures on Graham and Jackson. There's the only intersection with no traffic lights, and then we don't have any uh, safety measures on Wood Point and Jackson, riding on Wood Point. Uh, we every week we either have an accident on, on Graham and Jackson, and the following week an accident on Wood Point and Jackson. Um, we spoke about this in the past. Uh, I know you. The report said that um, uh, DOT has rejected our request, but uh, do we have to wait till someone gets maimed or killed. Uh, I, I really think we have to start pushing to protect our neighbors. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still concerned about that Graham and Jackson uh, intersection in particular. The the Graham, uh, the Jackson and Wood Point um, uh, is also problematic, but it has a different set of challenges at that elbow. Um, let, uh, let me see if I can get in touch with, um, with Keith about Jackson and see if there's anything else we can do. Cause yeah, you're right. It did not meet the warrants, which is infuriating to me. Um, and uh, I don't I actually. Uh, somebody almost hit me there uh, last week. Yeah, we're just uh, last last Thursday. It's, um, it's not because you you don't have to edge out into the and you have yep. to wait and watch the lights at either Withers or um or Skillman to make yep. sure they're red so you can kind of like go across and it's just it's really treacherous. So I'll uh I have not forgotten about this. Um, you know I drive it every day, so it's a little bit personal to me, but also I I know. You know, I know the record there, and it's crazy to me that it's not it's not warranted for a for a light. Okay, or, uh, uh, not a light, but a stop sign. You know, anything. Oh yeah, some I don't kind of stop control. Uh, yeah, because what happens uh, as in every business because of the pandemic, are, there's so many deliveries. You know, um, your yeah. car's blocking. You're, you're blind. Uh, yeah, you, you, visually you can't. You don't see what's there. So we have cars also swiveling. And it's just, it's going to happen. I just, mm -hmm. hopefully we can do the measurements to, to save somebody's uh, body parts or life. Thank you. Thanks, William. Appreciate it. Mitty, anything else, old business? Can I bring something up old business quickly, Eric, please? It's Bronwyn. Sure, go ahead. Uh, about a year or more ago, we had talked about bringing in council member wrestler and or former council member Stephen Levin or somebody to talk to the committee about the warrants and the warrants process and um, all of the rejected requests that we've had in CB1 um, to, I personally don't, you know, I'd like to know more about that process and what the regulations are that they're having to respond to in these studies and work with the council member to potentially propose alternative methods of um, evaluating because it's very clear that the methods that they have are failing our community. So um, I wanted to bring that up again as old business and see if we could revisit the idea of bringing in some elected officials to talk to us about um, the regulations. Um, yeah, I actually had a, uh, and I know, um... You're, you're stealing Ryan's thunder a little bit here. Oh no, sorry, a... Ryan. You should be the one <laughs> no, 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 not me. No, no, it's all good. No, we had a, we had a. Uh, um, Ryan and I talk about this often, and uh, we're going to look at um, in the new year, uh, kind of uh, taking this up either with um, Lincoln and somebody from uh, Antonio's office because Antonio was a big supporter of. Um, Public, pro or, uh, what's it called? Um, oh my God, not local preference. Local. There's like a policy term for like what he wants, but he was like, get rid of DOT 
uh, using uh, using federal DOT regs uh, for these silly things like you can use get off the BQE for a mile to find a bathroom because you know you can do that in Texas. It's like ridiculous um, uh, for trucks, which was my original pet peeve in the neighborhood was like all the illegal truck traffic on private streets anyway or local streets. Uh, so to answer your question, yes. We will take this up next year. Uh, Eric, I just um, I just got a text from one of our viewers right now. They're asking a question about Leonard and Skillman that they never got their stop sign. Did we did um uh, did was there a request? Leonard and Skillman. They never got their stop sign. Did we put a request for that? Leonard and Skillman. Yes, we did. That did come up last year. Can't remember. Yeah, Paul. I think we did it at the same time we put in the request for Conselia in Manhattan. We did. You're right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So they're just telling me as far as Leonard and Skillman, there's no stop sign. I did. Did that get approved? I don't remember. All right. Let me uh, hold on. Let me make a note. Uh, Thank you. Can we also add a Leonard and DeVoe where the library is? Did we do that one too? No, that, that wasn't that part stop of it. signs all up and down on it. Yeah, I know, but we didn't. Uh, we're talking about a specific uh, Leonard and Skillman, which we talked about. Uh, and what was the other one? Manhattan and what was it? Consolier? Consolier, yeah. Which that, did happen. That, that one's added. installed, right? Yeah, that one. Yeah, happened. I mean, that's right by a school. So uh, how that wasn't there for years and years, I don't know. But Leonard and Skillman, I'll have to, I'll have to go back and check and see if we got uh, a study response on that one. And then I'll follow up with Rhonda to see what the status is on there. Thank you. Stop sign. The system's working. Our constituents texted me. Text me. Good. Yeah, it's good. Um, Vanessa, you have your hand up. Is that old or new? Sorry, I'm not. I'm not sure. And again, I apologize for showing up late. But I wasn't sure if we were able to have time to talk about Binker's Anchor, or if we only spent this not time today. on Barry. Not no, today. not today. Okay. All right. Not today. That, that makes sense. It's a it's a <laughs> broad topic. We have a, everyone has a lot of opinions. I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss out on that. Thank you. I mean. I mean, that's happening. So, like, you know, we, the, the board voted on it a year and a half ago. DOT is, it's like, it's all happening. I think the only question is whether, excuse me, it's going to be extended as part of the open street, right? But it's, it's, it's a happening. So, um, do, 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 do. okay. So, uh, Okay, I see no more hands up for old business. Eric, I got my hand up, but I don't know. Kevin, I see you now. Thanks, sorry. Um, I'm wondering if we can send an email, if the committee can send an email to DOT asking for some sort of request for an update on Meeker. Um, you know, I know that obviously- I'm gonna, okay, I'll, I'll stop you right there. So what's gonna happen with Meeker is the, the work just ended for the painting season. And so I'm going to have them in in January to give us a full update on everything that they got accomplished in 2022 and where they expect to start in 2023 when they start up again. Um, and uh, and so we'll have a full accounting of like all the this. I can't fit it in next month, so we'll do it in January. Yeah, I, I just want to note, Eric, just for the record, I guess that like the community was told that the entire Meeker project from the K bridge to Metropolitan would be completed by spring of this year. Um, and, you know, what I'm nervous about and what I hear with the, with the Barry open street is this phasing, right? They're saying phase one of Barry will be, will be done next year. And we were never told phasing for Meeker. And then all of a sudden there was phasing and the phasing was no, to wherever no, no, they no. had stopped at the end of 2021. Um, no, Kevin, Meeker was always a phase. It was always from the bridge to um, 
what was it? It was the bridge to uh, McGinnis, and then it was McGinnis to um, I I, Union. I don't, I don't. It was. Trust me, it was. It was. I, it would be a surprise to me, Eric, because I, you know, but I, I regardless, I, you know, I'm I'm happy to go look at old notes or whatever. But I, I, I think that um, regardless, even if there were phases, it was entire. It was supposed to be complete in its entirety by spring of 23, uh, spring of 22, and phase one even if there was a phase one, is not yet fully complete. Right? It doesn't connect to the K-Bridge. There's no intersection work that's been done. Um, so I'm just worried about, you know, I mean, they're doing active BQE visioning and, right now. So anyway, that's, mm -hmm. I just, that's a request that I just wanted to flag because it's a major, major, major project with, you know, it's really, you know, right next to McGinnis Boulevard, our most dangerous road. Um, so that's all. Fair I point. I, I have spoken to Rhonda about it, about... Uh... Six six weeks ago, I want to say, um, when I was thinking about putting it on um, on the November agenda, um, I guess no, I guess it was back in September we talked about it. Anyway, uh, stay tuned because in January there will be a full vetting of what's happening with Beaker past and present and future. Thank you, uh, Andrew. Your hands up again. Is that old? Not, not intentionally. Sorry, I was not okay. Uh, okay. Listening to your instructions about lowering my hand, which I will now do. Katie has her hand up. Uh, go ahead. Uh, just in old business, um, I've brought this up to the committee a few times, but um, you know, street safety and uh, regulations in this intersecting intersecting streets surrounding the under the K bridge park, um, it, you know, there's still been zero movement. Um, and so I'm very pleased about all the changes around Kingsland, but um, in the streets surrounding uh, the K bridge, there's still uh, constant battles uh, with the truck and lack of city services. So um, I just wanted to see Eric, if we could put that on an upcoming agenda, please. Um. Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me, let me check with Rhonda and see I, that's. Might be an NYPD thing too, and they're in flux right now at the 9, 4. So let, let's wait till the 9, 4 gets settled and we'll, we'll circle back to that. Um, and then, sorry, 1 more thing. I just have to add. Kevin Baker almost missed it. Okay. Any other old business? Any new business? Ryan? Or uh, wait, committee first, new business. Uh Ryan. Hey, sorry. Um, yeah, the sorry. New, my phone's been cutting in and out and stalling. But for sorry, this is. I just want to make sure that the Trader Joe's intersection is on. But I guess new business. Do we have a set schedule for district needs, budget stuff, transportation? Because like every single issue, like from every delay to everything we seem to talk about, comes back to DOT's budget to me. And so I was just wondering. I remember Gina. Had, I know that we're starting the new budget cycle in like January, but I wasn't sure what the deadlines are for transportation committee to add anything. Um, we, we, so, okay. So there's no, uh, it's been submitted for this, for this next cycle. So, for, oh, for already for 2023 for July. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, uh, but we're starting up fresh uh, in January, and that'll be a separate meeting because it has to be bloodless, and so we can just talk about like <laughs> things that aren't controversial, and you know, to, to the best that we can. Uh, but a, bl just a blood a bloodless budget discussion check sometime yes. in the new year. Okay. Yes. Cool. Exactly. And Trader Joe's, the safety stuff is technically old business because we we've already brought that up to them. Yeah, yeah. No, sorry, um, my phone was cutting out, so I just I just missed that. But anyways, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay. Cool. Gracias. Nada. 
Um, okay, so let's see. Kevin, new business. Yeah, I just wanted to flag for the committee that um, there is a new street safety campaign that is just launched on commercial. Um, a uh, father that lives in Blue Slip, uh, his name is Zach. He is busy tonight, but he asked me to let folks know um, that they're calling for a comprehensive redesign of Commercial Street, um, which kind of very similar to that stretch of uh, Barry into Nassau that we talked about today. Uh, previously, or I guess, you know, over on Barry still is industrial, um, but um, up in Commercial, previously very industrial corridor with no crosswalks, no stop signs, no stoplights. Um, and many, 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 many people that live up that way that have moved in with no access to um, safe, safe streets access to the parks, to the rest of Manhattan Avenue, to the rest of the neighborhood. Um, so um, they're calling for a comprehensive redesign of Commercial Street. Um, and I hope that he is able to make it here next time to talk to you all about it. But I just wanted to let folks know it's called the Calm Commercial Campaign. Okay, thank you. Uh... Okay, uh, I, just for the future, this really isn't old and new business is not necessarily up, uh, open to the public, but I've been liberal with it. Um, but I, I go back and forth with like, kind of keeping it to committee only, but, um, uh, I've been entertaining it, so I'm not gonna jump back now. Anyway, Guillaume. Thank you. And I have. Yes, thank you. Um, the, in, in my corner of upstate Greenpoint, uh, the end of Manhattan Avenue, uh, was redone like more than a year ago, um, previous summer and has been, the crossings have been unpainted since, unpainted since I was wondering if the community board could ask DOT to, um, finish painting it in the next season. I'm sorry um, if this is the right time to ask you the right way of asking. That section. At the very. So you're talking about up by the uh, commercial design center at the end, at the north end yeah. of Manhattan, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like you come on commercial I, street that Kevin just mentioned to left towards the creek and that, that part there, not painted. Um, it's been more right. than a year. Um, yeah, I don't know why that stopped. I can, I can, um. I can reach out to Rhonda at DOT and see what's okay. going on. Thank you very much. You're Thank welcome. You. Uh, wait, let me just make sure. Manhattan Avenue at Design Center. Why? No. Painting. Yeah, they should have finished that. This. Uh, like there used to be a door. crosswalk and a stop sign. Right. Uh, yeah, let me circle back on that. Uh, Elliot Travel. Hello, thank you. Um, yeah, I actually, I gave the presentation for Leonard and Skillman on the same day that, uh, that Paul, uh, gave his yes. about Manhattan and Kinsella. Yeah. So yes. I would very much appreciate yes. to be looped in on, um, what, uh, updates you can find or remember. That's, that's, all, that's all business, Elliot. <laughs> yes, I know. I'm no. sorry. I, no, no, no. I, with my hand raising, I will email you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, please. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Yafim. Uh, on, the, on the same uh, line as Leonard and Skillman, is there, what's the process for getting stop signs at Leonard and DeVoe, Leonard and uh, Ainsley, Le Leonard and Powers? You can go, okay, so you can go to the, um, to start, you can go to the uh, DOT website, uh, the portal, and you can con. Uh, the mentioned, Rhonda mentioned this before. It's contact the the borough commissioner. Okay. And, and you can, yeah, and you can put it in there, and they have to. Uh, uh, once it goes in there, it's like a three one one kind of thing where they have to like log it, give it a number, and all that stuff. So it becomes. Um, but they have to do like a full traffic study, and it's like a three year, in between we. Skillman and, and what, what what did you say Skillman and Skillman and, and Devoe? Just no. further down Leonard. Like you're blazing down Leonard. You hit a stop at Skillman, then you hit a stop at Metro, and there's no stops between Metropolitan and Grand. 
and I'm trying to cross the street to go to the library on Leonard. On Leonard, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's and, nothing on uh, Skillman. We wish there was a stop sign. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Um, I mean, if it's in take three years, well, I'm not, okay. So I'm I'll tell it. you what. Start there. Listen. Start. Start there with putting it in the portal at the DOT portal, and then whatever response you get, send it to the community board office. BKO one. What is it? I should know it by heart by now. Why don't I know it by heart? BKO one at um, CB dot nyc dot gov and um just put it to the attention of the transportation committee and uh and the committee will get a copy of it you know like a log like anytime you would do like a 311 complaint they have to give you a number or whatever it's always good to once you get that to send it into the community board so that we have a record and then you know we report that out monthly but it's it's good for us to be aware so we can start there yeah, thank you and Eric, could we write a letter on, uh, to try to accelerate that process? I mean, especially by the library, because I, I cross there all the time trying to get to the library too, and it's, you know, it's dangerous. Or do um, you think we should wait for the number and then write a letter that references it? I, I think it's yeah, actually let's, particularly let's dangerous. I, the way I want there's a little the, hill. The way that there's a little things, hill there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the way that, um, things should proceed. Like it's been a little loosey goosey because of COVID and everything. <laughs> but really, sorry, this cough. Uh, but really we should be uh reacting to formal um uh formal requests that are going through like the website or whatever. Um and then we can say look here's the community record on this, blah blah blah. And then we ask for a letter. So we could I mean you could do it tomorrow. And, you know, we could probably uh, take it up in the next, either the next or the following uh, transportation committee meeting and start working on that. But I, I feel like that, yeah, this goes back a ways, but I feel like before I was chair, there was somebody that had asked for that intersection as well. And, uh, but it's been a long time. So it's definitely over the three year threshold. Um, for a study, um, so we'll 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 look into it. But in the meantime, put that put that request in and send it to the community board office, and then they'll forward it to us for follow up. All right, I think that covers old new business and Berry Street. Um, thank you all for attending. Um, do we even have quorum for a motion to adjourn? No. Uh, we don't, but, uh, anyway, thanks y'all for being on and for all the work you do. And, uh, I do not have a date for the new, uh, transportation committee meeting. We were going to do it on the 1st, um, because we were, you, you, some of you will remember that I sent that, uh, that list of car share, um, locations around, but we're actually going to. Uh, DOT has actually put in a request to have that heard at the full board uh, in December. So uh, it'll be sometime after, um, probably be the week before Christmas, because when else are we going to do it? Um, so, uh, so look for that date upcoming. Um, and I had another thing for the December agenda, but I can't remember what it is. But um, uh, But that's it. Okay. So All right. happy Thanksgiving, folks. Oh, yes. Happy Thanksgiving. It's only a week away. Um, all right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Joanna. Uh, thank you, William, for herding cats. And uh, we'll see you all next month. Bye. La la. Hey, thank wait, you, Eric, one question. Yeah. Do you have any intention of, of bringing back in person meetings or like? Yeah, I was just curious. Yes. But it's a big problem with uh, locations are a big problem right now. Um, Sweetie Sixties needs us to be out by like seven thirty. <laughs> um, the there's been I've had some uh, folks in the neighborhood volunteer spaces to me, but uh, the Jewish community can't attend there because they're sanctified all this you know all this stuff which is why we can't you know 
do community board meetings at church halls and things like that. But um, working on it next year for sure. Um, there Eric, will be someone, in person meetings. Eric, as someone who has never gotten COVID and is immunocompromised um, and has seen the many, many, many people that have been able to participate on these digital meetings, so many more people than the little meetings in the back of the community board office. Um, I, oh, I, these those days are over, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, saying, no, I think it, that, like, we will not be meeting in the community board office. No, in, but like in... on a rainy on a rainy night like this, you know, yes. we had eighty people. I mean, that's that's yeah. incredible. I mean, like I know that it's a lot of work, and I appreciate all the work that you and the committee do. It's also amazing, like the amount of people that are able to participate in these conversations. That's that's really been a great thing. Um, I, I would also ask as as a, a a no longer person who gets to 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 speak at meetings and do this stuff, if you would think about asking about the the budget, the the board investing in the equipment so that it like the SLA committee, they've been meeting in person, but like so that people that can't come could still participate. Because again, I think that like the the WebEx and the recordings have been really vital to people being able to participate like like anyone that had a meeting can come watch this tomorrow and i would just love like the transportation committee it'd be cool to, to do both um yeah i wish we could record it um because i know I, there was an article about queen's community board that they had you know that's what they did they stream it on like youtube live and they have a simple camera and they they do you know i mean again anyways it's just uh if if yeah not opposed. <laughs> All right. Well, we shall see. your influence as a chair transportation committee to, to <laughs> ask for us to, to do that. We'll like anyway. Well, thank, thank I will you. use I will use all my powers and all my skills. <laughs> I'm gonna say bye, folks. My wife has my dinner. She's getting angry. Bye. Bye, bye. Thank you. Thanks, Joanna. Bye. Later. Everyone. Good night. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you, Eric.